It's a turn-based game with real-time components. It's a fighting game, but it's got a deck. Over 20 years have passed, and there's still nothing quite like Mega Man Battle Network, at least in terms of gameplay, and especially for PvP. In this video, we're going over everything you could possibly want to know if you've already played Battle Network, but you're interested in PvP. Let's start right away with the most common questions. People love to ask me, which version is better for battling? The answer might surprise you. Both of them are extremely viable. I would say Gregor and Falzar are exactly 50-50 in terms of tournament results and in terms of just being effective. Gregor is more about power. Falzar is more about having a toolkit. I'd say Gregor is a little bit better if you're a newer player and you're looking to dip your toes into the water. But again, both of them are very viable and it's not like Falzar is that much more complicated or crazy. Pick the one that you like. I guarantee you'll have a great time. How are people playing? Well, in 2024, we have the Legacy Collection. This is an official re-release of all the Game Boy Advance games, and they have all the Japanese content that was cut from them. So it's got a lot of new features that you may not have been used to. The game is available on Switch, Steam, and PS4. It includes chips and e-reader cards that were only available in Japan. The other main way to play is by using Tango. This is an amazing program on your computer that allows for a rollback netcode. You've probably heard that term a lot. It's basically a way of saying it's reducing the lag in your fights and you can play against people from all over the world without nearly needing to worry about that as much. It also includes really great features like 100% save files so you don't have to grind for anything. You've got all of the chips and Navi customizers ready to go. It's also got really helpful things like replay features and being able to mod it to have all sorts of fun events like randomizers. This program was designed by the N1 Grand Prix. They are the premier community when it comes to Battle Network 6 PvP and just Battle Network PvP in general. They've been at it for years. They've got amazing resources on their YouTube channel, on their wiki, on their website. You cannot talk about Battle Network 6 PvP without bringing up the N1 Grand Prix. Gotta give a huge salute to them. I know that their Discord is very open and welcoming. They'd love to have you in. And while I'm plugging Discord, I'll say that my own Discord's pretty good, especially for the Legacy Collection. We've got more of a, a slant towards that end. But of course, we love Tango as well. Both of these Discords are going to be amazing spots to find people. How should you play? Well, that's really up to you. The Legacy Collection has got a lot of upsides and downsides too. There's a 30-second timer when it comes to picking your chips, which again, is both a good thing and a bad thing. You might encounter more lag online than using Tango, which has got rollback netcode. I personally don't find the lag to be that bad, but I play on an Ethernet cable connection, so your results might vary. The main reason to not use the Legacy Collection is that it's not cross-platform. So unfortunately, if you are a Switch player and your friend is on Steam, there is no way for the two of you to do any battling. It's very, very, very unfortunate. And of course, you also have to grind yourself in terms of getting all your battle chips and HP memories and things like that. If you had to pick between Switch and Steam, I think both of them are pretty viable. I will say Switch is definitely the most popular platform for the official Legacy Collection. It's also very portable, so in terms of in-person events like I like to run, it's extremely easy to have fun events going. That being said, the Legacy Collection on Steam is the only way to get the ROMs needed to play on Tango, so that's another upside if you enjoy playing the official version, but you also want to dip your toes into Tango. Again, Tango will only run using the official Legacy Collection ROMs. That is, of course, a way to support Capcom. It's a way to make sure that we are going to be getting new Mega Man content in the future. I know that we will. I'm very optimistic about it. Um, um, so yeah, uh, the great thing too about Tango is that we'll automatically read those ROMs, so you don't even have to worry about it. It's extremely easy to set up, very, very intuitive. I'll also say there are some slight differences if you're playing on the Legacy Collection compared to Tango. Again, you might have a little bit more lag in the Legacy Collection. I know that input lag in terms of chips like Erase Man or Element Man are a little bit off. It's pretty hard to do chips like Neo Veri on the Legacy Collection or using Magnum. So again, be very cautious if you're trying to use those strategies because there is a tiny bit of lag. Because the Legacy Collection includes all that Japanese content that was cut from our English BN6, that's become the default way to play by allowing those chips. These are mostly Boktai chips like The Count, Django, Otenko, things like that. For the most part, they don't really break competitive play, so of course we allow them. If you're playing on Tango, that is mostly biased towards the English experience for BN6, so by default, those are not going to be allowing any of the Boktai chips in general. It's not really a huge deal because, again, most of the Boktai chips aren't really viable, with one exception, Gundo Soli X, which is definitely banned in a lot of events because it is quite oppressive. 
And even with all that being said, Tango can support a patch card format or a Japanese format. It's just a different metagame, I suppose. It's, you know, people are generally going to be picking the English version that's become the default way to play on Tango. What are the rules? So if you are speaking English, I would assume you are listening to this video, 90% of your battles are going to be without patch cards. And if that's the case, these four chips are almost always going to be banned. The first three, Double Beast, Gregar X, and Falzer X, these are all really obvious chips to ban. They are all event chips that you got in the original game, kind of like getting Mew in your Pokemon games, right? It's not something that you would counter in your normal gameplay experiences. Because of that, they're very, very powerful. They're very oppressive. We don't want to be playing with them when we've got less HP without patch cards. The last one, Gundel Silly X, I'll talk about in further detail later on in the video, but just keep that in mind. That is something that most people are not going to play with. My own tournaments always have it banned, uh, and by default, I think most people kind of like to play with that too. Finally, throughout this video, you might encounter some jargon like TFC, Buster Bug, cross canceling. I made sure to put timestamps all throughout this video to make sure that you can just jump to it and be able to understand fully for yourself what these things mean. Leave a comment if you have any questions. I'm happy to help. Again, our Discord is always open. You can reach me very easily. You can always reach the N1 Grand Prix as well. There are so many people out there who love Mega Man Battle Network 6. This guide is really a love letter to you guys. I want this to be very all-encompassing and have a lot of great information for new players for the future. I used to run a lot of tournaments. I've been running a lot less because now I'm focusing on playing and reviewing every single DS game on this main channel. Please look forward to that. Um, though, of course, we are having a fun tournament at the end of this month as well. And I should also say, too, I recently, recently, just within the past week or so, have released a new YouTube channel all about IRL stuff, traveling, having fun. If you enjoy the vibe of our community, definitely consider giving that a look. That being said, let's jump right into the meat of this video, and let's start with the battleships you're likely to see. And we're going to start right here with the chips. Now, I want to make it very clear, this folder that I've got right here, it's not something you could net deck. This is just really showing a lot of the common and powerful chips that you will see in your battles because, let's face it, the chips that you use in PvP are pretty different than the ones that you'll use in-game. So right off the bat, this is Area Grab. It's a staple. It really needs no introduction whatsoever. You know what it does. You get a little bit of extra area. It's extraordinarily powerful, especially with crosses like slash cross with one bit of area you can just smash your opponent with 160 damage charge shots left and right it's really really powerful stuff and of course you gotta run area grabs just to stop the opponent from taking your area that's just how good it is invis and anti-damage are your two main forms of protection in this game you're usually gonna run both of them at three some more aggressive folders can run two of each or even you know, dip down a little bit further, but still, they're both extremely powerful. Invis is going to make you uh, mostly invincible to attacks for about mm, six seconds or so, where anti-damage is going to stop one attack and only one attack, but you can also deal a little bit of extra damage with it, and you can also stop a lot of other attacks too, because you can combine it with a barrier or an aura, where Invis is not going to be able to combine with that. If you have your Invis with a barrier or an aura, you're just going to lose your barrier or aura, right? So it's not quite the combo you want, but the two of these together is extremely powerful. And again, they're staples for a reason. Now, these three mega chips right here, Erase Man, Element Man, and Judge Man, they all serve really different functions, but they are extraordinarily powerful. And part of the reason they're so good is because in Battle Network 6, you can have the star code for the weakest versions of all of your battle chips. So you can play them in every folder, and believe me, I would say 99% of folders are running them. A race man, let's start with him. He is a cursor, which in this game penetrates anti-damage, right? We just talked about how anti-damage is a premier form of defense. The cursor chips go right through it, but a race man gets even better because his beam also gets through the flashing state that Invis gets you. So both of these premier forms of defense get shut down completely by a race man, and then he leaves you paralyzed, which means you can follow up with a powerful attack that's maybe hard to hit with, or you can you know, maybe quickly charge up your buster and get a few shots off. A race man is extraordinarily good. He even breaks through shields, the Navi customizer, and he breaks through obstacles because why not? I think really the only defense that he doesn't go through is um, a barrier or an aura. Otherwise, he's basically laughing all the way to the bank. Element Man has got unparalleled versatility in this game. So right off the bat, Battle Network 6 has a cross system, which means that you can transform into any form you want indefinitely 
until you get hit by a weakness. Because Element Man has fire, water, electric, and grass all put together, he is extremely good at decrossing the opponent and shutting down any other strategies. But then it gets even better, right? Because if you're right in front of the opponent, you can freeze them and stun them in place, which means you've got double damage on your next breaking attack. You can also, again, set up really powerful attacks, just like a race man right there. His meteor is extraordinarily accurate. His electric attack is going to break panels just like Magnum, which you will definitely see. And finally, his wood attack sets all of the stage to grass, so it's a great way to shut down Sanctuary Holy Panels from the opponent. It's also a great way to set up a double damage fire attack. So again, all four forms are extremely good. They all have their own uses. He is just a phenomenal chip. And the last one of these is Judge Man. Just like a race man, he can penetrate through the flashing state of an invis. He's not going to stop an anti-damage because he doesn't have the cursor, but he does have an electric uh, status, which means that he's going to get double damage on the Aqua Cross. He's going to be able to deal double damage on a bubble, which is very, very popular in this game. But the best feature about the Judge Man is that he's going to be able to get back a lot of your area. Now, unlike Grab Banish, which you'll also see on this list, Judge Man is going to only get back your area if you can push them away but still he will summon all these books that will make sure that you get your area back as long as you can follow it up with maybe a wind wreck or you can just force the opponent out and you'll get your spots so really really cool chip super versatile and great for your area zone control wind wreck phenomenal chip much more important than gregor than in falzar because falzar has tengu cross which can get rid of um life aura that's basically the main reason to be running the wind wreck it is an instant way to get rid of a life aura or a barrier because all wind attacks in this game uh, do get rid of them. They blow them away. Wind Rack is really interesting though because even if you don't actually hit with the damage attack, which is a wide sword range, there's still a gust of wind that will blow the, uh, the aura off. So really, really hard uh, to dodge the Wind Rack in terms of that. And Wind Rack's got another great use too. Like I said earlier with Judge Man, you can push the opponent back, which means you can regain your area for those Judge Man books, or maybe the opponent has camped out enough with an area grab that your panels are going to restore. Super great stuff there. And Wind Rack also doesn't flash the opponent, which means you can combo it beautifully with Beast Rush combos. It's extremely good. I think Wind Rack has a solid... Well, there's a lot of chips in this game that could be the best chip in the game, but Wind Rack has got a really, really solid claim to that, I have to say. Phenomenal chip, and you could run up to five of them. You wouldn't really want to run five. I mean, maybe a fun gimmicky folder could, but I would say two is pretty good in Gregor. Um, you probably only need one in Falzar. You could actually get away with not running it at all in Falzar uh, because of that Tengu Cross, but again, really, really great ship. There's no reason not to run two. Next up is Bug Fix. This is a definite staple, but only in certain Navi Customizer builds that want to be bugging their Navi Customizer and don't want to get rid of those bugs too. Believe it or not, there are a lot of really helpful features you can get in this game if you intentionally bug the Navi Customizer and you don't listen to your dad's advice at all. Um, bug Fix is an extraordinary chip for those very purposes. Now we've got Slow Gauge and Fast Gauge. As you can imagine, both of them have their own special uses. Slow Gauge is going to slow things down. Fast Gauge is going to speed things up. Again, towards the end of the video, um, especially in our defense section, we're going to talk in great detail about the way that these two chips influence the tempo of a match. Right, A Slow Gauge is really good if you've got powerful buster shots if you're able to um, really take advantage of you know slow and grindy setups fast gauge is really good at actually timing the opponent out after 15 turns in battle network 6 the game will go to a damage judge to determine who is the winner and that's an honestly really viable strategy it's also great if you um, have kind of a jankier folder that needs to be constantly um, you know selecting more chips right if you got um, you know may maybe a folder that's mostly one code you could use all five of them with a slow gauge because even if you're flashing the opponent you know you're not going to be wasting any of your chips because there's plenty of time you know for the opponent to recover and then you can use your next chip fast gauge is better with you know two or three chips or i mean i guess you could do more if you were extraordinarily fast with them um but again they both have their own uses they're both really really cool in fact sometimes you want to pick a gauge in your folder just to counter an opponent that's got a faster slow gauge that's maybe not nearly as likely but you know it is something you could think about full cust another really awesome chip especially in falzar who usually is going to be um, making this their regular chip, which means they always start the battle off with it. If they go right into full cust, they are going to be able to enter their dust cross and start shuffling right away for powerful giga chips like hub batch and bug death thunder. Really, really cool chip. But then full cust also has other uses too, right? 
Maybe your opponent is in Beast Out, which only has a three turn counter. Well, Full Cust is going to instantly get rid of one of those turns. It's also going to help you dig um, a lot faster in your folder. And actually, just like the Fast Gauge we were talking about earlier, if you've got a folder that's got a lot of different chip codes, so it's not likely you can pick you know, three chips or more in a folder, you can use full cust really nicely because, you know, your one powerful splash chip can be used and then instantly full cust to get um, a new set of chips without sitting around and being um, a duck for your opponent. Geddon is extraordinarily good. And if you ask me, one of the biggest design flaws with BN6 is that you can run two Geddons in your folder. Two Geddons is very, very stupid, but it happens a lot. And actually on that note, BN6 is extraordinarily balanced. So even me saying that, you know, take that with a grain of salt. Um, I just, that's just a little thing that I have a, a strong opinion about. Um, but again, get an extremely good. And why is that? Well, many reasons. For one, it's going to destroy all the opponent's panels, which means their holy panel is completely done for. It can basically set up all sorts of powerful attacks. I mean, Snake is a thing that you see in older games. You don't really see Snake so much in Battle Network, um, but Geddon is still really good at being able to stop the opponent in place. I like to use it in Bug Death Thunder because it means the opponent is not going to be able to run around and dodge the attacks. Um, Geddon is also really good at shutting down Colonel Force, arguably the strongest chip in the game. The, your opponent is not going to be able to summon those little soldiers from holes, um, which is really, really good stuff. In fact, Geddon is probably best known for being a powerful chip against Gregor because Gregor doesn't really have a lot of ways to be covering over um, the holes. In fact, the only way they can do that is through the Air Shoes Navi Customizer program, which is kind of bulky and can be uninstalled. So yeah, Geddon is particularly good against Gregor players, although of course uh, still really potent against Falzer players if they're not caught off guard for it or if they're not ready for it. So now we've got Anti-Navi. This is a trap just like Anti-Damage, which means that the opponent uses a cursor chip, they are going to destroy it, but still Anti-Navi is extraordinarily powerful. This is a chip that effectively steals a mega chip, one of the best chips in the game, from your opponent to use it yourself. So, you know, both players have five, presumably in their folder. You go up to six and they go down to four. Extremely good stuff. Uh, they lose a chip and you gain one. However, there are a lot of ways to play around it. In fact, you can actually kind of get screwed yourself with Anti-Navi. There are some fringe situations later on in this video that we'll talk about. But again, Anti-Navi, there's no denying that it's a very, very powerful chip. White cap is not going to be seen in every single folder, but extremely aggressive folders, maybe ones that like fast gauge or maybe ones that are trying to chain together a lot of powerful attacks and stop the opponent from flashing are going to love white cap. It's really, really simple. It makes your uh, next chip paralyze the opponent. So um, yeah, maybe a chip like Blast Man SP right here, who normally causes the opponent to flash. If you put that, um, if you put this white capsule with the Blast Man, you're going to stun them instead of flashing them, which means you can follow up with another powerful move. Really, really good stuff. Machine Gun 1. This chip is really easy to sleep on, right? This is, you know, one of the earliest chips that you get in the campaign mode. However, it's really hard to dodge. It hits multiple times and it's in star code, which means that it's a great way to get rid of anti-damage. Think about how good that is, right? Not only are you stopping the opponent's defenses, but you're also dealing a bit of damage. Super good stuff. It's also one of the best ways to decross Dust Cross, which is one of Falzar's best transformations. It also gets rid of Ground Cross, but you don't really see ground cross nearly as much unless it's in beast form. Um, yeah, machine gun's really good. And actually, while we're on the subject, I want to dispel something. Well, I'll dispel two things for you. The first is machine gun one, two, and three all have the exact same speed. I know that there are chips like Bubble Star that do have different speeds in this game, but machine gun is not one of them. I used to think that machine gun two and three were faster. That's not true. Um, they also hit the same amount of times as well. Only one hit is necessary to completely uninstall the opponent. You don't have to hit multiple times. Although again, it does look really nice and flashy. Panel Grab is another chip that I personally slept on over a year ago um, and has really, really proven to be quite a powerful chip. You might be thinking, why would I only want to steal one square as opposed to three that you get with Area Grab? Well, there's a few things, right? Panel Grab can actually go beyond an Area Grab um, because you're only stealing one of them, so it's really easy to put the opponent into awkward situations with it. Um, it's also a really great strategy if you want to throw, you know, an obstacle like a Poison Pharaoh or a Fanfare all the way in the back row. All you need is one area grab and this panel grab to do it. Um, it basically makes the opponents have to deal with really awkward shapes in their setup. Also, they're going to have to use a full area grab to get rid of the one panel grab. So even though it's less, you know, equity overall in terms of the space that you're stealing, it's still just as annoying and obnoxious to deal with. And in fact, you know, a lot of folders might go with two area grabs and two panel grabs instead of three or four area grabs. Again, not every folder, but you know, some might, and that's something you can think about. Grab Revenge is just a great chip, and so is Grab Banish, which is 
Very, very similar. It's a little bit weaker, but comes in different chip codes. I chose the Z code here because it pairs really nicely with Sanctuary, but Grab Revenge is realistically used a lot with Q as well because that's the Kernel Force code, um, which is, again, one of the strongest chips in the game. And Grab Banish comes in the B code, which is also really good, and also the M code, which will combo really nicely with Muramaso that we'll talk about. This is just like Judge Man. You're going to be taking back all of your area. The only difference with this compared to Judge Man um, is that it will push the opponent backwards, so you don't have to worry about, you know, following up with a wind rack. You are definitely going to get your space back as long as you actually do connect with the opponent. If the opponent, you know, has maybe a barrier up or an anti-damage or something, they can stop the grab revenge from happening. And also, grab revenge does pierce through invis, so fun little uh, fact for you to keep in the back of your pocket. Sanctuary. We all know how powerful this chip is. And consider in other Battle Network games, this is a mega chip that you'll gladly run. It is not in this game. It's just a standard chip, albeit one that you can only use at one copy, but still so good. All those holy panels are making you take half damage. That's basically doubling your life total. Again, there are a lot of ways to destroy the panels in this game, which makes Sanctuary a lot more fair and a lot more reasonable. But still, it's so, so good, especially if you can actually pair it off with a life aura that the opponent has no win chips to deal with. It is so, 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 so good. Um, I've seen a lot of folders drop it in favor of more offensive stuff, and it makes sense because Z is an awkward code unless you're running Grab Revenge with it, but honestly, Sanctuary is not really a chip that anyone should be sleeping on. It is definitely something at the first and foremost of your deck building. Life Aura similar. I would say Life Aura basically gatekeeps a lot of the really degenerate stuff like Super Vulcan spam from being, you know, way too oppressive. It is a very, very powerful chip and a very important one. Uninstall comes in the G code, the L code, and the R code. You have to put it to a chip that doesn't dim, just like the description says. So you can't put it, you know, behind this ground man, as great as that would be. Um, but still, as long as you connect with it, you're going to be destroying a lot of Navi Customizer programs. Now, the full list of programs is a little bit hard to remember. Many people think that it's just the solid programs. Um, that's not necessarily true because it does not get rid of Undershirt for whatever reason. It does not get rid of the Zoo programs. That's Rush, Beat, and Tango. Um, but it does get rid of just about everything else. Actually, I guess it doesn't get rid of Custom either, but it gets rid of all of your shoes. So no air shoes, no float shoes. It does get rid of your super armor too, which is probably the main reason to, get, uh, to be running your uninstall. It is extremely good to get rid of super armor because that means that you can set the opponent up with a lot of ways to interrupt their charge attacks or their uh, regular attacks in general. Um, yeah, uninstall. Really, really good stuff. Groundman SP and Protoman SP. These are really cool chips. The reason I have them up in here is because you see them get splashed a lot because they are so, so powerful. Groundman SP basically hits three times as long as you're not in the same row. Think about that. That's 390 damage. That's basically a life sword in an element code. So it's basically going to be able to deal double damage to crosses like Slash Cross, which is obscene, 780 damage. You're also throwing rocks and uh, cracked panels all over the opponent's side of the field too. So if they got a Sanctuary, you can kind of trash it up a little bit. It's great stuff. It will never hit more than three times, um, but still, it's such, such, such a good chip. Um, the G code in particular has got a lot of great options. And again, the B code also has a lot of great options. Protoman SP, so accurate. It's a sword, so it's going to deal double damage to Tengu Cross. Yeah, he's just really, really solid. And he pairs really nicely with Blastman SP. These two together are often called the B Bros because they're so good. they got a lot of really accurate coverage. They deal a lot of damage. They're solid. Chrono Force, I've said a lot. Arguably the strongest chip in the entire game, especially for Gregor. Um, well, only for Gregor, because it's only in Gregor. This chip will basically win games easily without any real setup. Honestly, without any setup at all, it's still a really strong chip. And with area grabs or with beast outs and attack 30s, holy cow, this chip will absolutely just destroy you and mow through all of your HP. There are a lot of cool ways to counter it. And Falzo, don't feel too upset. You have a lot of really powerful Giga chips like Hub Batch, which is so, so good. Bug Death Thunder. There's Meteor Knuckle as well, which is extraordinarily good. I'm on Gregor right now, so I've got Chrono Force, but don't feel like just because Chrono Force is so good that Falzar can't win. BN6 is extraordinarily balanced. Muramasa, you are dealing 500 damage so easily with your Sword Swing. So, so easily. You can decross Tengu for 1,000 damage. I've seen it happen many a times. And again, it pairs really nicely with Grab Banish M. If you can pull it off just right, you can basically get a frame-perfect attack to follow up with your swing and uh, get a guarantee connect. So, so good. Electragon and Magnum are really powerful chips in the L code. 
Both of these are going to be destroying panels. I guess Elect Dragon cracks panels instead of, you know, making holes appear. But still, they're really accurate. They're really fast. These are honestly splashed quite a bit. In fact, I would say the L code is one of the better codes in the game because you can easily build a folder around it. Now, these three chips at the bottom, I put here very specifically, and that is because they're usually banned. Double Beast, very, very powerful mega chip. Honestly, I'm not even going to really talk about it. It's that good. Gregor. This is the strongest chip in the game, I would say. And yeah, again, way too good. Um, you can remember these really easily because these are both cards that you download uh, through patch cards in this game. You might be wondering, though, why is Gundo solely X banned? Well, the reason for that is really simple. It's actually just the G code. So in the original Battle Network 6, the Japanese version had a lot of Boktai chips in them, but that's not necessarily the case with the English version. We got all of them taken out except for the Gundo Souls. In fact, Gundo Soul 3 is another great chip uh, that you'll often see paired with Colonel Force. Gundo Soul EX was not a chip that we had in English. It's extraordinarily powerful. It's got a huge range to it. It's basically like a life sword. It deals over 400 damage if you are jacked in outside, as you should be. It pierces through invis, and it's really just an extra tool that the very powerful G code just doesn't need. So, you know, maybe a little less valid than Double Beast and Gregor, but still, Gundel Soli X is not a chip that you want to be uh, seeing in normal battles. Um, usually, if you are playing with these chips on, you're playing in the patch card format, which has a lot more HP. Um, and very few things are banned because, you know, your HP totals are just absolutely massive and crazy. Now, it's important to remember that every single cross has a weakness. If you can hit that, you'll not only deal double damage, but you'll also knock the opponent out of their cross for the rest of the match. The first cycle is elemental and really, really easy. It's a lot like Pokemon, and you've seen it in all the other Battle Network games. Fire loses to water, water loses to electricity, electricity loses to wood, and wood loses to fire. However, the second cycle is a little bit trickier. It's unique to Battle Network 6, so let's go over how I remember it. So first off, you've got swords, right? If you're cutting through the air, that's going to be dealing double damage to a wind virus, right? Now, if you're a cursor and a gust of wind hits you, it might ruin your aim. So wind beats cursor. But at the same time, if you're a sniper, you might be able to hit the opponent who's heavily armored at their super secret weakness, just like a boss. That's why cursor beats breaking. And of course, swords are not going to do anything to something that's made of stone and metal. So breaking beats sword. So if you got that memorized, um, sword beats wind, wind beats cursor, cursor beats breaking, and breaking beats sword. We're starting our video off with Heat Cross because it's definitely one of the simpler abilities. The two things that it does is give your fire chips that don't freeze time an extra bit of 50 damage, and it's also going to raise um, your buster level by one. Um, the cool thing about Heat Cross is that being a fire element means you're doubling your damage on grass panels, so um, you're definitely incentivized to use fun things like, look at this, Black Bomb. That's an extra plus 50 if you can get it on um, with the Heat Cross, and then that can multiply to 600 damage if you've got grass panels. Pretty uh, exciting stuff. Um, I would say the best fire chip in general is going to be Heat Dragon because that doesn't freeze time. It's really hard to dodge and once again does combo really nicely with grass panels. Let's go ahead and show this off. Now at full buster settings, which we do have, we're dealing 130 damage with our charge shot, which is definitely decent. Like it's nothing, you know, nothing too crazy, but uh, but solid nonetheless. And of course that can get double two with the ability um, to go multiply on, um, look, look how much damage that was. Um, to, with that ability to multiply with your 50s, right? So with grasses, even though you're giving plus 50 to a chip, that can turn into plus 100, which is really cool. Now, our regular P shot is going to be 6 damage now, and I'm going to use Buster Up to show you an, another example of what that can look like um, in just a little bit. Um, but take a look at this. We are dealing 6 damage per shot. Now, like I said, it doesn't actually impact your ability um, to do more damage, that, like more damage from your charge shots, but still pretty cool. Um, so now, even if we beast out, I'm going to show you that unfortunately it does not actually go beyond 5. So um, if you're interested in doing a lot with your Beast Buster, unfortunately, look at that. And even after using the Chip Buster Max, it's still going to be 5. Just something to keep in mind. Um, and look at that, Heat Dragon doing an extra 50. Now, one of the cooler things about Heat Cross, it's boring but it's cool, is um, its Charge Attack, the Heat Breath. That's going to deal 210 damage which is quite a bit. That's enough to break a life aura, which is definitely something worthwhile. Um, and let's go ahead and do one more just for good measure and show you guys what it looks like. Um, definitely nothing wrong with that. Being able to power right through it. You know, people often get upset with uh, with life aura 
But they're like, man, we don't have Tengu Cross to be able to blow it away. Well, you can just power through it with Gregor, which is very cool. Um, and yeah, overall Heat Cross, it's not bad. Um, if you have Buster level 1, if for whatever reason your Navi Customizer is not using a lot of power-ups in, in that regard, having um, the ability to add a plus 1 to it's pretty big. Like, for example, if your Beast Buster is only hitting for 1 a shot, you're effectively doubling that with Heat Cross, which is pretty cool. Um, but overall, um, the abilities aren't really necessarily something to build an entire folder around. They're, um, you know, they're... Uh, they're pretty nice for what they are, but uh, also not necessarily the most exciting. Electross is super powerful. Um, as long as the chip is neutral and it doesn't freeze time, it can make it so that your chips will stun the opponent in place. As we all know, stunning is really powerful. While they're locked there, you can hit them with your buster, especially your beast buster, um, or maybe your powerful chips that are hard to hit normally can connect a lot easier. Take a look at what happens when we use a chip like Sandworm. Normally, this chip um, is okay. You know, it deals a decent amount of damage, but it flashes the opponent, which is another word um, for the, in the uh, invis effect or invincibility frames or iframes. Um, so it's like whatever, it doesn't really do all that much. But if you can freeze the opponent in place by using um, Electross, as long as we're charging up our chip and we pull it off really quick, take a look at that. And let's follow up right here with another one. And we can even use um, our, our Buster a few times or take the second to charge up our attacks. Look at that, boom, 140 damage, really solid stuff. Now it's Beast Out. And I'm gonna show you that this is one of the best Beast Outs uh, in the entire game. It's very, very powerful. Um, the reason why is because the beast charge that you get is a similar range to heat cross. Now, the damage is a little weaker and it's a little slower too, so it's not going to break through a life aura, but take a look at that. You're cracking all of those panels, you're hitting for 190, right? And then you can follow up with even more beast buster shots. It is so obnoxious and so, so powerful. All we're going to do is use this for the rest of the fight. Now, you can also um, power up your electric chips a little bit more because... Um, just like Heat Cross, uh, your electric chips that don't freeze time are going to be able to deal um, an extra 50. So that's really great for chips like Elect Pulse, which you see everywhere. Elect Pulse is definitely a powerful chip. Um, the Elect Pulse 1 can stun them, so you're hitting for 50. You can bust through them some more, hit them with another 50, keep going. If you get them in a bubble with um, a bubble star, that extra 50 becomes 100 because you're multiplying the damage by 2. It's very, very powerful. What really keeps Elect Cross in check is how good Tomahawk Cross is. Tomahawk Cross makes it so that you can't get stunned whatsoever, and it's a wood elemental which does beat Elect Cross and send it back to the Stone Age. Um, but that being said, Elect is definitely something to watch out for. I would say it's one of Gregor's best transformations. Slash Cross is very powerful. Um, with only one area grab, our charge shot basically has the range of a life sword. It charges up pretty quickly, and it's also the strongest charge shot in the game. Uh, it does 160 damage if you've got all of your buster pieces on it. And our swords can be charged up to do a sonic wave attack that makes it harder to dodge, and, it, and they get an extra 50 on them, which is super, super solid. Let's take uh, a quick look at that and show you how it's done. So we are going to go into an area grab. Just to really lock in. People like to call it a slash lock. Oh, looks like we missed one right there. 160 damage coming in. 200 damage from this wide blade. Look at that. Look how hard it is to dodge an attack like that. Um, now, the really interesting thing too about um, Slash Cross uh, is that the amount of time it takes to charge up is basically the amount of time that they get for invincibility frames. They're flashing. Take a look at this, right? Without much effort at all, I can just keep spamming the charge attack and I'm going to be able to time it out in such a way that it'll just keep hitting them. Once again, this is called the slash lock that the opponents can get into. Now, if you're thinking to yourself, wow, that seems really powerful, take a look at Slash Beast, which is obscenely strong. We are going to be able to charge up our normal attacks to do a big X attack. Um, each of those Xs will deal 200 damage at maximum settings, but if both of them connect, um, they will deal more than 400 damage, which is absolutely obscene. Um, you basically have to get right in the middle, but as long as um, Mega Man is able to lock in him like that, look at that, look at all of that damage we just did. Holy cow. Bam! Instantly killed him on the spot right there. Now, you may be thinking to yourself, wow, Slash Cross is really cool, um, seems really, really powerful, right? And it is. However, it is held severely in place by the fact that its weakness, breaking chips, have some of the strongest chips in the game, right? So, um, a Groundman SP will deal 390 damage to a normal opponent. That doubles to almost 800 damage against Slash Cross, which is a big yikes. And Meteor Knuckle is a very popular and powerful Giga Chip from the Falzar version that can absolutely one-shot somebody in Slash Cross if they are not being careful. So it is something to think about. A Race Cross is pretty powerful, and I'm going to show off something really fringe in the first spot. So if you do hit 
the enemy on enduring PvP or an enemy navy um, with a neutral null elemental chip that doesn't freeze times. So that'd be things like spreaders, right? It wouldn't be step sword because that's got a sword element. It'd have to be something like spreader or cannon right here. If they if the opponent has a four anywhere in their HP, they are gonna get an HP bug, which I guess is um I guess that's a joke from Japan. I, I guess uh, something about um, the Japanese language uh, is very much related to uh, to that. So you can see that I hit him with two different ones, which uh, made the HP bug drain a little bit faster, which is pretty cool. Now, an interesting thing too about um, Erase Cross is that all cursor chips get a plus 30, right? So most crosses that you're going to see are going to give you plus 50 to chips that don't freeze time, or you can charge them up for double damage. So even though a race man stops time, unlike the other chips, he is indeed going to be able to hit uh, multiple, or I'm sorry, going to hit for an extra 30, which is very, very cool. Look at that, 120 plus 30. Let's go ahead and connect with it. And now, take a look. Erase, I'm sorry, the machine gun chips, which are in just about every single folder because of a number of reasons, are going to hit multiple times for massive damage. Look at how much damage that did. Holy cow, that's just amazing. Now we've got our charge beam, which is a laser attack. And look at that, it can hit multiple times if the opponent moves multiple times through it. And finally, the last really cool thing to know about Killer or Erase Beast, because of course um, Killer Man is what he's known in Japan, I guess uh, Capcom decided to censor that, um, it's called the Killer Tail. Now the cool thing about the Killer Tail is that it does indeed deal cursor damage. So the laser beam that um, Erase Soul does for whatever reason is just neutral. I believe the reason why Capcom did that is because in this game all cursor chips break through anti-damage, anti-navi, they destroy all the traps, the traps the opponent has. So I feel like Capcom probably thought if the laser beam um, could instantly get rid of um, anti-damage, that would be a little bit too strong. However, the laser beam does go through invis, which is pretty cool. That sort of invincibility frame uh, flashing state that you're in. So the killer tail is insane because as you saw, it was instantly extremely fast. It actually does pierce through invis. And because it's truly a cursor element, unlike the laser beam, it does grow through anti-damage, so the only way to stop it is through um, a barrier or a life aura or something like that. It's super hard to dodge, and it gives you an HP drain. Um, it is definitely one of the strongest toolkit um, uh, chips available for Gregor. Um, I definitely got to tell you that Erase is great. Now, Erase is also weak to wind. True that most, it's true that most folders that you go against have wind racks because wind rack is an amazing chip. But the really cool thing about being weak to wind is that for the most part, there aren't a lot of um, wind ships that have a lot of range. So if an erase player stays near the back, um, the opponent's going to have to go in a beast out to hit you with that wind rack to get you out of it, which is pretty rare. Um, and even Tengu Cross um, with the charge shot is not going to be able to hit whatsoever with their charge attack. So erase is extremely good. Um, I think erase beast is one of the best transformations that Gregor has, period. It's extremely powerful. As you can see, there's all sorts of great applications. Machine guns that are everywhere deal a ton of damage. You're getting extra 30s on all of your screen dimming chips. It's an amazing, amazing feature right there. Charge Cross is pretty underrated because um, it's not nearly as powerful outright as some of the other Gregor Crosses are, but you're going to see right away that we've got some really interesting applications with Charge Cross. In fact, many Gregor players will start the match immediately with it, and you'll see why. Take a um, really quick peek at our custom menu. We've only got five chips right now, but we'll uh, increase that in just a second. Now, I want to show you a weird interaction as well. We've got first barrier, which is um, a barrier that can take 10 HP of damage, um, and we've got a rock cube as we're starting off. For whatever reason, the charge tackle that you do in this game is a collision, and barriers are not immune to that. So um, you do want to be really careful if you are um, starting the match off with a first barrier and a charge cross. Um, a lot of times, you might fight an opponent on a map that's got little rocks on them, and if you're not careful, you might actually just throw away um, your barrier just like I did right there. Now, you can see we got our black bomb, and you can charge it up by holding A. This caps out at 100, and it does get a little bit faster and faster, but take a look. It just takes forever to actually do anything meaningful, because even 50 damage, right? Heat Cross gets to 50 right away. If you're trying to use Charge Cross to be using fire attacks, you're better off with Heat Cross, but that's okay, because take a look. Charge Cross instantly got us to 5. Now take a look, too. If we got a Full Cuss, which is definitely um, a powerful chip, boom, already we're at um, 7, and we can even get one more slot to unlock very soon. Um, I love that tackle that Charge Cross does. You are invulnerable to everything. It's different than just um, an invis or an anti-damage, right? Invis can be pierced by 
Judge Man or a Race Man. Anti-damage can get pierced by Cursor Chips and things like that. That tackle you do, you are completely invincible to everything, um, including Time Freeze Chips. So Charge Cross is really good at maybe destroying mines, you know, maybe just being um, an offensive option while also being a little bit defensive. It's really, really solid. Um, now, the, the, uh, the Charge Beast attack that you get, it's okay, it's not amazing, but um, it charges extremely quickly, which I guess is fitting for Charge Man. You can see just how quick it's going to be. Look at that. Now, it is slow, right? There is um, there is a slow delay to it. Um, but, the, you know, the decent it's a decent amount of damage. You know, it's pretty okay, all things considered. Um, and you can see that it's trying to immobilize Charge Man. It's unfortunately not going to do it because Charge Man is just too fast. He just keeps plowing along. Um, but still, nonetheless, Charge Cross is very, very cool. Um, that Charge Tackle that you do as well, um, not only is it invincible, but it's pseudo-breaking. So what does pseudo-breaking mean? Um, unlike a regular breaking chip that would deal double damage to sword chips or uh, sword users like Slash Cross, um, it's pseudo-breaking, which means that you are going to destroy an obstacle in one hit, just like we did with the Rock Cube. Um, and if the opponent's frozen, they'll take double damage as well. So there are some cool things um, that can be done with the Charge Tackle. I mean, heaven forbid, if they're on a grass tile and they're frozen, they're going to take quite a bit of damage from that tackle, which is very cool. Um, all things considered, Charge Cross, really, really solid. Um, for whatever reason, newer players seem to think it's pretty weak, but no. Uh, on the contrary, Charge Cross is insanely good. Gregor's crosses might be powerful, but Falzars are tricky. You gain access to all sorts of abilities just by transforming. From a little bit of healing, to blowing away life for us, to status guard, which is the only way to get it without using patch cards. This is the story of Falzar and its crosses and transformations, as well as a quick lesson on cross cancelling. Let's get right into it. So in our Gregor Crosses video, we talked about the elemental weaknesses and the cycle that you can expect in Battle Network 6. It's a little bit different than the earlier games. Um, however, in this video, I want to talk about cross canceling, which is a very simple but very important concept related to crosses. So in this position, Mega Man is currently stunned, right? We're on the custom menu. Um, and this can work even if you're frozen or bubbled or whatever. The really cool thing is all you got to do is beast out or transform in some way. Maybe we'll swap to a different one right here. And all of a sudden, boom, we enter the battle, no longer paralyzed, no longer frozen or whatever, and we're ready to fight again. This can be a really big deal because if your opponent is running a stun strategy, maybe they've got a powerful chip that they can um, punish you with if you're not careful. So obviously being able to dodge that is great. So many Navi customizers run Rush, which is a program that punishes you with um, paralysis the first time you try to use invis. So if you wait until the end of the custom screen to use your invis, Rush will trigger, but then you can immediately enter a brand new cross and completely nullify that. For that reason, it's a really good idea to wait until uh, maybe the middle of the game to use the cross that your folder is most built around. If you start off with something like maybe Charge Cross or Dust Cross to help you cycle through chips and maybe get your strategy going, um, that way you can um, still preserve some advantage and be able to remove yourself from awkward positions like that. Let's start off Falzer with Aqua Cross, which is definitely one of my personal favorites. I like it quite a bit. All of your water chips that don't freeze time are going to heal you for 50 life, which is super notable. The game tells you it's 5%, um, but that's actually based on your HP memories, like your true life total, not um, the extra HP you get from the Navi Customizer. So for all intents and purposes, it's 50 life. And think about how solid that is. First of all, you get to heal just as you use your chips, which is pretty good in itself. But if you're down to 1 HP with Undershirt, you can really abuse that position because, for example, going to 1 HP, then using a water chip, going to 51, get hit, go back to 1, go back to 51, right? It's really hard to kill you if you can just keep using up um, a chain of water attacks, which is super cool. Um, I would say that one of the best features of Aqua Cross is its very, very fast charge attack. Um, true, it's not going to deal nearly as much damage as other crosses you've seen, but because it's so fast to charge and because the actual um, blast of the bubbler is so, so quick, it's really, really good at hitting the opponent's um, anti-damages. So we're going to go ahead and throw a few water chips out here. And you're going to see um, just exactly how they work. So um, I've already taken a bit of damage. You're going to see each of these little seeds is going to heal me for 50, which is super cool. Um, now, an interesting spot to think about is, um, let's bait him right there. Look at that. And boom, we just we didn't even have to use um, an actual water attack, right? Um, just having our charge shot as an option was really, really cool in that position, right? Um, so think about how good an Aqua Dragon is, which I can show you in just a second. We're going to double it up, charging it up for double damage, 240. And... Um, we can easily combo that off with more of our charge shot action, which is just so cool. Um, and we can hit with another times two effect right there with more breaking chips. Breaking chips do deal double damage to frozen targets, which is amazing. Let's go ahead and go into Beast Out right here and show you what um, the Aqua 
um, spinner looks like. It's pretty cool. Um, it's very, very nice if you can get a little bit of area because it's going to go directly in front of you, kind of in like a wide, ooh, darn, little punk right over there. Well, let's charge up that once more. Um, and let's see if we can get a little attack right there. Nope, looks like it's more like the long sword. If we can just be really patient, we can show you exactly what it looks like. Look at that. Nice. Look at that. Tons and tons of damage. Super, super solid stuff. Now, Aqua Cross is really held in place by the fact that electricity is pretty common. Um, Judge Man is in every single folder. Um, Element Man is in every single folder. And Elect Pulse Chips and Doll Thunder Chips are pretty popular ways to do a lot of damage. They're pretty strong. Um, as well as um, um, Elect Dragons, which are very, very good too. Um, but still, Aqua Cross is just a really, really solid way to start a match or to go um, a little bit closer to mid game just because it's pretty safe overall. Um, you can basically um, attack the opponents from the back row. If you've got Hub Batch in your folder, um, you can maximize your charge and attack to really start spamming things. Because if you can get a frozen hit on the opponent, you could actually fire a second water attack really quickly um, without your opponent getting iframes. So, really cool overall. Um, I really enjoy Aqua Cross. Now, Tomahawk Cross is by far one of my favorite crosses. Um, it is absolutely insane just how many things it does. First of all, you do get the grass body, which means that you can heal um, when you are on grass panels. Of course, you take an additional bit of damage on fire, which is super, super scary. But I wanted to go to 1 HP really quick just to show you what this looks like in practice. Um, in this game, Battle Network 6, I don't know about um, maybe 5 as well. Maybe 5 is similar, I think. But um, if you go and turn the stage grass like we were about to do... Um, the rate of healing that you get is a lot slower once you're beyond 10, right? Or once you're lower than 10. Uh, once you start getting a high and more, it gets a little bit bigger. Um, but yeah, look at how slow it is, right? That's obviously because it's pretty busted to just keep healing. When you've got Undershirt around, it'd be really hard to kill you, um, like it has been in Battle Network 3 and 4. Um, and unlike Aqua Cross, right, which, you know, can definitely abuse Undershirt because you just instantly get... 50 HP every time you use a water chip. Um, yeah, it's a little bit harder with Tomahawk, but still, one of the best things about Tomahawk is Status Guard. That There is not a Navi Customizer program that can give that to you. Um, that's the ability to be not stunned, not paralyzed, not frozen, not bubbled, none of that, right? You just don't get any of it whatsoever. It's extremely, extremely strong for that reason. Um, and you also get to charge up your grass chips for double damage, which is definitely not something um, to snuff at whatsoever. Risky Honey is a really powerful chip. Um, this is a chip that does more damage um, the more hits that you get going on. Um, so it's really good against like a Beast Buster or something. Um, and take a look too, right? You uh, you also get the ability um, to have a Life Sword Swing, which is very similar to Slash Cross, right? You basically have um, full damage when you've got um, plus one area grab going on. And because it's also partly a sword chip or a sword element, you do hit Tengu for double damage. And if you're against those... Um, Little shadow viruses, you also get a little bit of extra damage there too. So let's go into um, Beast Over. I'm sorry, Beast Out when it comes to Tomahawk. Now we're going to see some boomers that go down, which are pretty cool. Um, the two of them don't really hit that well together. Uh, you basically have to wait. Yeah, look at that. We completely missed right there. Uh, ooh, am I going to die? Yep, I'm dead. Cool. But you can see what the boomers look like. Um, they're basically like two of them to go. Uh, and if you can hit in the exact same corner, both of them will connect for I mean, a good amount of damage. But really, at the end of the day, T uh, Tomahawk is really good at preventing the statuses um, and at really closing the game out when you've got um, an area grab and your powerful Tomahawk swing is not going to be missing. Tengu Cross is obscenely important because it's one of the easiest and most effortless ways to get rid of life auras and barrier 200s. Um, in this game, Mega Man Battle Network 6, all wind chips and wind effects just instantly blow them off. And you can see we don't even have to deal damage with our wind rack attack. All we got to do is hit back and B at the same time to gust the opponent to the very, very back or to the very, very front, which will also get rid of their life auras. Now, um, we can always use our Tengus more offensively too. It's usually more of a reactionary tool, right? But if we actually manage to get our opponent into the back row, we can basically spam our Wind Rack infinitely. The Wind Rack is so good because um, it doesn't actually cause their opponent to flash and take those invincibility frames. You can just do it um, as much as you want. Now, you gotta be really careful when you are um, a Tengu, right? You gotta be extremely careful because there's a lot of really random stuff that are technically swords. So the Shuriken of anti-damage, Let's go ahead and just pop right into that. Look at that. Dealt for uh, dealt double damage to our wind friend right there. Super unfortunate. Um, so that's something you're going to see in just about every setup. Now, the real thing you got to be watching out for is um, chips like Muramasa and Neo Veri. Those chips are <laughs> very, very scary because they can hit for quite a bit of damage, um, even without hitting for double, um, which, yeah, is going to be a big problem. And you can take a look at this Barrier 100. 
it's just going to blow off as soon as I walk into uh, the opponent right there using their wind attack. So let's go ahead and just keep abusing our friend with the wind rack. And I'm going to go ahead, look at that, and there's the Muramasa, right? It's very scary. In fact, um, it's, a, it's a very common combo uh, in Battle Network 6 to go into an, a Life Aura or a Barrier 200, predict that your opponent will go into Tengu, and then um, punish them massively with a Muramasa or a Neoveri. In fact, that was a whole video that we did earlier. Um, and of course, having the Air Shoes as Tengu is massive. Yes, we do get Beast Out and Falzar to do um, something very similar, and we don't get Float Shoes like we do with... Um, with, uh, with Falzar, so, you know, poison panels are still going to hurt us for um, extra damage and things like that. But still, the ability to get um, your shoes at any second is pretty, pretty massive. And I'm going to go ahead, too, and show you what it looks like um, to go into the Beast Out uh, version of Tengu right here. So, it's a pretty cool attack. It's going to hit for multiple times in, a, in an interesting T formation. Um, and look, we're going to hit for double damage right there. Very, very cool stuff. The, uh, the Wind Attack um, does hit... Uh, multiple times, which is quite powerful. Um, but truth be, truthfully being told, um, you're basically just going to be using Tengu for the back B um, and the ability to occasionally really punish the opponent if you can get them on the very, very back row. Duskcross is so powerful for so many reasons. It's just got amazing utility, um, as well as the ability to shuffle away your chips and draw into combo pieces or find um, a really powerful and important chip to your folder like Bug Death Thunder. So one of the most common things that you'll see people do um, on the first turn of a game, if their falls are, is go right into Dust Cross, but immediately use a full cost, and they'll have a first barrier up too. So this is basically impossible to shut down, right? Because if you want to stop this, the um, the full cost from going off, um, you'd have to use a time freeze chip, like maybe um, Erase Man or something of the of the sort. But if you got the barrier up, you're gonna stop that Erase Man Cursor Beam from hitting uh, double damage and decrossing you. Um, it's very, very powerful because now I've just got a free turn to immediately start throwing things away. And we're going to do that, right? The dust shoot's really good. Um, you basically put all five of those chips at the bottom of your folder, and then you can eventually draw into them once again. So take a look at a few really cool um, uses of Dust Cross. Um, if you hit back and B at the same time, you do a vacuum suck. Now I can use a chip like, okay, I can use a chip like this, my air raid, and take a look. I got a lot of value out of it, and I shot it out for 200 damage which is insanely good. Very, very powerful stuff. Um, and let's see if I can get one more coming in. The same is true uh, for obstacles like rock cubes and whatever. Um, now, what's really interesting is that many maps in Mega Man PvP just start with rocks and obstacles on the field. So if you're Dust Cross, you can basically suck everything up and um, just start to spit things out for 200 damage a pop without really much effort whatsoever. Plus, you're also destroying these obstacles that maybe are helping your opponent, which is super, super cool. Um, now, the... Uh, ooh, I just got blown into that. I guess there's that a little uh, error, error feature there, which, as we all know, um, does cause you to uh, lose some value. So, um, the last thing we'll do before we hop into the Beast Out is show you what the charge shot is and what a charge shot, right? So, even if the damage isn't insane, you basically spit out these little scrapper borns that will crack panels, right? So if your opponent's on sanctuary, if they have some important spots, or even if they just want, if you just want to lock them um, into not being able to move as often, just using your charge shot is a great way to do it, which is so so powerful. Now, once we go into um, the beast out, you'll see that the beast over. I'm sorry, you'll see that the uh, the charge attack is pretty interesting. You become invincible for a few seconds as you start to randomly spit out um, dust all over the place. Kind of hard to hit with, right? It's not always easy to actually get the connects going on. But still, those um, panels that you shot out did destroy a whole bunch of um, spots in the field. Look at me, I'm just so good today. Um, you destroy a bunch of panels on the spots, and um, you are invincible while you're in the air too. So a lot of great defensive opportunities there. But truthfully, um, the dust is mostly going to be used for cycling right away and for sucking up obstacles at the start of the match. Um, it is held back severely by the fact that machine guns are everywhere to destroy those traps. Um, so even though the Erase Cross's um, killer beam does not actually destroy Dust Cross, um, there are still basically, you're basically always going to run into Erase Man, the Navi Chip, or um, a bunch of machine guns to ruin your day. So you've got to be really, really careful and make sure um, that if you're using an anti-damage um, while you're up in Dust Cross, that you have something like Invis or Barrier to protect it or preserve it. And last but not least, we've got Ground Cross, which is pretty interesting. It's not really my favorite, um, but it does have its uses. Uh, the best thing about Ground Cross is that it gives you super armor. Now, granted, just about every single Navi customizer is going to have super armor because it's just that good. But if you ever get it uninstalled by the opponent, you can always hop back into Ground Cross to make sure that you've got it going on. Now, um, 
All non-time freezing chips that are breaking element do get plus 10 damage. I don't know why it's so weak. Um, the reason why is because you can charge up these attacks to deal um, some rock damage that can come in. You get little rocks that get to show up in the corner, which is like pretty cool and all, but uh, all things considered, I think you would rather just deal double damage like um, some other ones do. So take a look. Right, so pretty interesting, but unfortunately the rocks don't even like crack or anything, I don't know, they're, they're whatever. And truthfully, um, a lot of uh, breaking chips are not really that powerful either when they're not um, breaking time. The best breaking chips are Groundman SP, even regular Groundman and Meteor Knuckle, all of which do, of course, freeze time. Um, now, the charge shot is pretty interesting. Uh, it's very slow, so it's kind of hard to actually connect with. You know, and it's it's very much telegraphed as well, right? Because you go underground and then the opponent knows um, that you got a little bit of time to move out of the way. However, going underground is basically a really great defensive tactic. You are more or less immune to everything, and um, that is has that has some really interesting applications in itself. And similarly, when we go into ground beast, you're gonna notice that we've got a lot of really cool defensive applications too. So let's go ahead and give some space. You can see what it looks like. Look at that. It's green. That green invincibility is the same kind that you get from Fanfare, which is just super powerful. Um, even if the attack itself isn't nearly as strong, um, being able to warp across the screen and um, deal damage at a fast pace while also being completely invulnerable does have um, very, very good upsides. Now, another downside of Ground Cross is that it's weak to Cursor, and every single folder has got it, right? Erase Man is super, super popular. Um, and machine guns are really popular too because they destroy your anti-damages and your and your um, other trap chips. So um, if you're in ground cross and you've got an anti-damage up, you should be very, very wary because if your opponent hits you with a machine gun or a magnum or something, you're going to lose ground cross, take double damage, and you're going to lose your trap. That's a really, really big swing, so you definitely have to watch out for it. In our last video, we built a folder together for Mega Man Battle Network 6 PvP that went over the fundamentals to help you build your own folder. Today we're going to do the exact same thing with the Navi Customizer. I'm going to be going over briefly a few tips and tricks, and we're going to be devising a good Navi Customizer build to complement the folder that we're currently using. So right off the bat, I'm going to load up the Navi Customizer. And let me tell you something. Everything that Land's dad has ever taught you about the Navi Customizer is wrong. The only thing that's right is that solid lines have to be on the command line. What do I mean by this? Well, it's true that I'm only using four colors up top, and I'm making sure that no colors are overlapping, but I'm actually losing out on a ton of space with the Navi Customizer. In Battle Network 6, and only Battle Network 6, you can move programs off the grid. Now, every time you do that, you get a bug. I'm gonna teach you that most of these bugs are not that scary and worth um, talking about. So, for whatever reason, the corner spaces are no good. So, for example, I couldn't move this custom here because that's getting um, the bottom left spot. But still, that's a ton of space that we're able to access. Think about this entire grid. I hope that blew your mind. And if it didn't blow your mind, you're already um, a pretty solid PvPer. <laughs> so, one last tip, uh, very, very, very quick tip for the Navi customizers that you may not have known for Battle Network 6, did you know that you can compress just about everything? So, this one is already compressed. I'm gonna go ahead and put in a code to uncompress it and show you what that looks like. I'm holding the right D-pad button right now, and I'm typing in A-B-L-L-A-A-L-R-B-A. -A -A we just made that back to normal size. I'm gonna do it one more time. A-B-L-L-A-A-L-R-B-A. -A -A um, every single program's got their own secret code. I'm gonna link in the description um, a really wonderful re uh, resource on the Rockman EXE zone that is going to help you shrink every single program you need. All of my programs are shrinked. Just wanted to show you that real quick. So, um, I'm going to show you custom one, air shoes, float shoes, and let's go ahead and see if we can squeeze in an attack max somewhere. I don't think so. I think it's just a little bit too big. That's okay. We'll put in a speed max, and maybe we can even fit in a charge max. Does anyone know what all these programs have in common? Custom 2, Custom 1, Charge Max, Air Shoes, uh, Speed Max, Float Shoes, Air Shoes. All of these are programs that the Battle Chip, well, Giga Chip rather, and Falls are. Uh, Hub Batch gives you for free. In fact, that board of programs that I showed you is not even the full extent of all the things that Hub Batch gives you. I wanted to bring this up because I feel like a lot of new players are sleeping on Hub Batch. They see that it doesn't deal any damage and automatically think it must not be very good. In actuality, Hub Batch is insanely good. Think about it. You basically get an entirely second Navi customizer for free. You get all of your Buster stats to be at the maximum settings, custom plus three, um, undershirts, 
uh, shield, and um, there's something else I'm missing. Someone in the comments let me know what I forgot. Um, oh, the, the shoes, air shoes and omni shoes, um, air shoes and float shoes. So um, just something I wanted to bring up because I feel like Hubbatch is really cool and it doesn't miss. Think about how bad it is to miss your Giga, how terrible it feels. Hubbatch always works. Now, Hubbatch can be countered by using uninstall. And that's actually part of the reason why we have uninstall in this folder that we built yesterday. So we were thinking about the weaknesses of this folder, which is all about using attack plus 30 and double points to massively power up attacks like Super Vulcan, Number Ball, and uh, Meteor Knuckle, all of which hit multiple times and get a huge buff from these chips. So we were thinking that Super Armor is kind of sad, right? If the opponent has Super Armor, that means our Super Vulcan is not going to flinch them for all 10 shots. We would have to find another way um, of connecting with all of the hits, um, maybe using Elect Dragon to make some holes appear, or, or rather, they're cracked holes, but as they move off them, they become holes to um, try and shrink them in a spot, or just hit them with Uninstall, um, comboing it in with uh, the Elect Dragon, the Bubble Star, maybe Machine Gun, all of which are chips that are pretty hard to miss, so that we can connect with a big Super Vulcan. Now, this is all really great in theory, but in real life, your opponent is a real person who is trying to not die, and they're going to do everything in their power to make sure that your strategy doesn't work. So what happens if our big Super Vulcan that's souped up with double point and attack plus 30, what happens if it misses? Or what happens if it doesn't fully connect, right? Sure, we still have uh, Meteor Knuckle, you know, we got Ground Man SP, um, we got Number Wall, we have, we have chips that deal damage, and even Bubble Star, um, putting the enemy in the bubble to deal double damage with the Elect Dragon, that's like solid, that's 380 damage between two battle chips. Um, but that might not be enough. So I'm thinking with our Navi Customizer, we should try to get a, a good booster stat so that if we do miss, we can still have enough firepower through the rest of our support chips to be able to delete the opponents. And if we really think about it, we're kind of a combo deck, aren't we? Because we're trying to assemble one custom screen that's got double point and attack plus 30 and Super Vulcan, as well as maybe like Killer Man Star, Erase Man Star, or Judge Man Star to stun them in spots. Um, we really want to assemble as big of a folder as possible, so I feel like having at least custom plus two is going to be really, really valuable for us. Um, and that's why I've got full custom here. So my thought is, on the Falzar version, if we turn into Dust Cross and we use full cust right away on turn one, that means we can instantly start shuffling through our folder. And that means the opponent has no way to destroy the chip or destroy our cross right off the bat, right? So that's going to be really helpful. Um, and that's going to be something we think about as we build our Navi Customizer. So let's go ahead and remove everything. Now, in all honesty, if we think about what I just said with Hubbatch and all the amazing programs you get, Hubbatch gives us custom three and it gives us all booster stats to be maximized, right? Those are two things that we really, really critically want. It also gives us a shield if we're in normal uh, Mega Man mode. The shield is pretty decent. Don't sleep on the shield. I believe it only works in regular Mega Man, Mega Man mode. I don't think um, it combos with any cross, even if the cross doesn't have a back B. Could be wrong about that, but I'm pretty sure that's the case. Um, so what we're going to do is start off with our custom two. We're going to throw it off the grid because it's really big and bulky. And I also think that a lot of newer players underestimate... Well, it's not that they underestimate HP. They overestimate the value of all these other chips or other programs that you can throw in the Navi Customizer. And that's true and great, right? It's like, it's, it's absolutely correct. Um, to want to have a lot of programs. I'm of the opinion that HP is really great for two reasons. One, you don't die, right? That's a pretty good reason to have a lot of HP. The other thing is if you do get hit by uninstall, you're going to lose all the programs that you've so painstakingly set up on your command line, but you don't lose your HPs and you don't lose your attacks. It only hits the things on the command line. Although actually I think um, Undershirt doesn't get hit by uninstall. I could be wrong about that too. Someone in the chat, um, let me know. I'm sure someone's got um, a good answer on that. Anyway. I like to have, like, a ton of HP. This, I think, is a really solid place to start, and we can always wiggle it around as we're uh, messing around with it. So, another thing we're going to really need, because in all honesty, I really like the idea of using Hubbatch. So, rather than throw in a ton of space for um, a lot of other solutions, why don't we just throw in Giga Folder plus one? That's going to let us have both Meteor Knuckle and, hub and Hubbatch. True! We don't necessarily need Meteor Knuckle, but I like it as a multi-hitting attack and as a fallback for Super Vulcan in case it misses. So I feel like Giga Folder plus one, think of this as just having all of those programs instantly available to us, right? Now, we want to be really sure that we don't lose our Dust Cross right away. Obviously, we got the full the full cust so that we can instantly start shuffling our chips, but we're also going to throw in um, a first barrier. 
And the first barrier is really good because that way, even if the opponent starts off with something like a race man, right? Because if we're doing um, a, a war between my full cost and not, a time stopping ship like a race man could hit first. Well, that's going to instantly stop the race man um, from breaking our cross. And honestly, shields are really obnoxious. I know most people think, oh, 10 HP, like what a big deal is that? Well, unless your opponent has attack max on their buster, it's going to take them a lot of shots from their P shot to actually break the barrier. Um, and unless they have a multi-hitting attack, it's basically going to totally tank one powerful thing. So I feel like um, the shield is something, or the barrier is something um, to not sleep on. Now, as far as the rest of our space goes, I feel like super armor is so much value, especially for the size that it is. In fact, we were talking about how good super armor is and how we want to uninstall it in our opponent. This means that if we've got our super um, Vulcan going, uh, normally the opponent might be able to, um, to knock us out of it if they use another attack. But with super armor, we're not going to worry about that, and we're going to be able we're going to be able to make sure that our movement is super solid. So we've got our um, super armor right there, and now we are going to worry about our bugs, right? Bugs are a thing. We've got an HP bug right here, an HP bug right there, which combined, by the way, um, I might make a video on all the bugs and all the glitches that go down. If you'd like to see that, please let us know in the comments. Um, we got a custom bug. Now that really stinks. That this is probably the worst bug in my opinion. Um, the custom bug means that. Um, after a certain amount of turns pass, you're actually going to lose a chip in your custom gauge. Um, that doesn't mean the chips are destroyed. It just means um, your selection of chips shrinks. So you get a lot of power up front, but it's going to get really awkward as time passes. I think that our chip folder is going to need a bug fix in here as well. Um, and if we're running bug fix, we may as well fully glitch our buster. Now that's interesting, right? Like we could have thrown in a white piece here. A white piece doesn't glitch anything, right? But if we intentionally glitch our speeds, it gives us a very beneficial bug um, called the Buster Blank Bug. And I'm going to show that and uh, demonstrate that in battle in just a second. So this is a much better Navi Customizer board. Think about all the value we've got off the grid. Think about all the value that this Giga Folder 1 is going to give us with Hub Batch. We got Custom 2. We got a first barrier. And we're really thinking about our strategy, right? Every single piece on this is really relevant. We're not taking any guesses as to what the opponent does. Um, we're really maximizing our synergy. When you break the rules of the Navi Customizer, you get a bug and bugs are bad, right? Well, in Battle Network 6 PvP, some of the bugs that you get can be beneficial if you build your strategy around them, and some of them are not so bad and so scary that it's worth being afraid of. The Navi Customizer is a resource we want to squeeze as much value as possible to get the most amount of abilities and value from it, and knowing which ones to avoid and which ones not to is a big part of this video. We're covering every bug, and let's start with something really simple right here. Um, this is my favorite way to grind bug frags in the entire game. We've got our battery program right here that attracts electric viruses, but because it's off the grid, and any program that's off the grid is going to give you a bug, um, we're going to be getting an encounter rate virus, or an encounter rate bug, which means that we're going to be fighting viruses sooner than usual. It's kind of like the opposite of sneak run. Now, we've also got some attack ups right here. Now, these two are both fine, right? Um, you know, they're not the same color next to each other. Um, they're not off the grid or anything. This one, however is on the grid, right? So we're going to get a Buster Level 1 bug as a result from that. And I say Level 1 because um, in a future fight, we're going to show you what happens when you stack certain bugs. Not every bug in the game um, has levels to them, but some of them do. And most of the time, uh, having more levels means that it's going to be exacerbated. So this is exactly what we were looking for. This is what I mean when I say it's the best way to grind bug frags in the entire game. Because these killer eyes are electric, the batteries attract them. And because the battery is glitched, we're fighting enemies more often, which means we're more likely to find the bug frags. I've made this boomer chip um, regular coded, so at any point we can kill the opponents. But take a look. Sometimes the buster freezes up. And sometimes if we're really lucky... Did you see that? It dealt max damage. That did 40 damage right there um, from one shot. Now because it's only a level 1... And darn, we weren't lucky. Only 25% to get those bug frags. Um... Because it's only level 1, we have um, a 1 out of 16 chance, or rather like a 6.25% chance of getting um, the, the maximum buster shot. But that's the reason why this bug is good. So let's go ahead and start bugging it to level 3. Now, I will say this. You might think, hey, if I put this attack 1 off the grid, that's a bug, and on the grid, that's another bug, right? No, um, it's only per program. So this is only going to give us one extra bug. Um, so it'll be level 2 at the moment because this one's bugged and that one is, is bugged as well. Um, but it won't be anything more than that. So let's go ahead and also move this off the grid. 
And look at that. Now, when we shoot our buster, we are no longer going to get any regular P shots anymore. We have a, um, about an 18% chance of dealing charge shot damage. And then, um, what is that? An 82 or 72% chance of, I guess, 82. An 82% chance of firing nothing at all. And you might be thinking, wh why is that good? Why would you want to do that? Isn't your regular P shot fine? Well, um, the charge shot damage is really good when you're in a standoff situation with your opponent, right? Sometimes taking the time to charge up your buster is not the best thing uh, in your situation. And because you have a chance of dealing um, charge shot damage, you can actually proc the opponent's um, anti-damage for free because anti-damage has to be dealt at least 10 to get out of it, right? So there's a lot of really good benefits to using it. Um, and we'll cover some more advanced features on that too. So let's add a really scary bug right here. Um, this is the custom bug, okay? And actually, because we're adding um, a fifth color to our situation, we're also getting an emotion bug. So let's start with that first before we talk about the custom bug. Once you start getting to five colors, um, every time you start a battle, there's going to be five seconds of a random status condition for Mega Man. Now, most of the time it's detrimental, like you, maybe you'll be confused or blinded, but sometimes you'll get a good bug, like green invincibility, um, which means you can't be hurt whatsoever. Um, certain folders don't really care about the first five to ten seconds in battle, or rather they don't care about, you know, what the opponent is doing to them. If they can get that free green invincibility, they'll be in a really good position. And if they don't get it, whatever. You know, they'll just wait out some blindness and some uh, confusion. It's not really the end of the world. So I would say that the status bug is actually one of the better bugs that you could get. Um, and that, you know, the variance isn't too bad. And it's not like you'll be bugged for the rest of the battle. It's not like you're confused the entire game. It's only for, you know, a brief amount of time. So anyway, because it's level, it's level 1, it'll be 5 seconds. Now, let's go ahead and put this off the grid. And let's put this off the grid too. Now, um, this is going to be a level 2 custom bug. Custom bug is really, really frightening, and you'll see why in just a second. Um, <laughs> basically, the longer the game goes, you're going to start losing chips uh, from your draw. Now, it's not like they'll go away forever, you know. Uh, you can still draw uh, ones beyond them, but still, uh, a pretty scary situation nonetheless. And let's just go ahead and bring some random chips in here. Because I do want to show you what this new um, buster bug looks like. Right, no more regular shots whatsoever. They're completely gone, but hey, a decent chance, 18% of uh, hitting for max, right? For hitting for a charge shot, obviously they're on holy panel, so it only looked like 20, but still pretty good overall. Um, and I think in this next fight, maybe we'll take a second to uh, to show off what it can look like. So this is the first screen, nothing wrong there. Now, take a look. That chip that was once there is gone. And it's just going to keep getting worse until you're all the way down to two chips. It won't drop you any lower than two chips. But yeah, this is probably the worst bug that you can have in the entire game. As you can probably imagine, you should definitely steer clear of it if possible. So, now we've got ourselves... In fact, let's get rid of that bug because it's a little too scary. I'm going to show you what warp step looks like or movement bug depending on your perspective. Um, because super armor is off the grid... We're going to be getting a movement bug, and it's not like there's multiple levels to it. There's only one um, type of bug that you can get from that. And why not? I'll also show you um, what it looks like when you go ahead and um, get yourself a multicolor bug. Look at that. Um, there are only six types of colors in the entire game, so now we're going to have 10 seconds of whatever random status ailment is going to happen to Mega Man. And we'll see. Maybe it'll be good, maybe it'll be bad. You know, you never know, right? You absolutely never know. Okay, uh, and let's go ahead and do that. Now watch. I am now... And look at that, I got Invis for free. Not bad, you guys, right? Not bad at all. Hard to complain about an Invis for free. So, uh, take a look. I'm only moving the maximum amount of distance. A little bit awkward in that way. Um, I would say the movement bug is uh, kind of interesting in that you can dodge the opponent pretty well. But it's also really scary in that... Um, you know, your own chips kind of need positioning to be able to uh, be most effective. If you go into Beast Out, you know, your auto lock is going to help you with it. Um, I don't love having movement bug throughout my entire setups because the movement bug is going to make it so that, um, you know, you can't hit as often as you want to. Um, but I will say that movement bug is pretty cool if you do have a bug fixed chip in your setup because um, being able to dodge attacks for um, a good part of the game is a pretty good and interesting way to play. So, now that we've shown you what um, that status bug looks like, let me show you uh, Crack Step, which is pretty interesting. So, if I take a... Um, let's do Air Shoes. Air Shoes is probably the one that makes the most sense. 
And why not? I'll keep ourselves a little status bug just to show you what uh, the range of certain status conditions are. Now, this one does have levels. The more that we bug it, the more likely it is that when Mega Man leaves um, a panel and he moves off of a panel, he's going to crack it. So let's see if we can get a few. Look at that. See, uh, look at that. I believe that's a 2 out of 16 chance of cracking panels. Now, the interesting thing is, because we have air shoes, we still do get to walk on them, right? So this is kind of an interesting setup in that, um, you know, if your opponent uh, is maybe like a close range kind of person, you can be really defensive and uh, keep your opponent away from maybe using Proto Man, who needs a, um, you know, a clean tile in front of you to hit. Or maybe your folder is all about snakes or summon black. So being able to use those freely is really great. You don't have to worry about putting in a get in in your folder. That being said, uh, Sanctuary is not going to work really well with Crack Step because you're going to be destroying your own uh, holy panels. So, you know, even though there are some defensive capabilities, it's not necessarily the best. You really have to build your folder around it and decide if Crack Step is right for you. Um, now, this is probably the most common uh, bug that you'll see in the game. Uh, this is... The HP bug that you get as a result of glitching your HP programs. Now, the reason that's common is because having an HP bug is really not that big of a deal. Even if you never use, like, a bug fix or something to get rid of it, you're probably going to lose, like, maybe, like, 100 or 200 HP total, depending on how long the game goes. And even then, that's not even super likely. Um, you can really mitigate a lot of that damage loss. So having, you know, um, the sheer quantity of HP is going to be better. Now, you can see right here, you know, it's draining at a decent rate right now because we do have a level 3 bug. Um, and it does get pretty big. I believe it can go up to level 7 or level 8 altogether. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, like I said, not the biggest deal. Um, it's a pretty easy bug that you can fix with your bug fix. Um, and the, uh, the, the, sh the, sh the sheer size and value that you get out of, um, you know, using your um, HPs properly is going to definitely outweigh all of the downsides of that. I guess it was actually just a level 2 bug right there. So let's go ahead and remove those. And finally, I'm going to show you probably the spiciest bug in the entire game. One that can be built around and one that is really quite cool. Um, this is the humor bug. It's very, very infamous. And in that's uh, if it is bugged, you will get an emotion bug for Mega Man. Which means that um, every, I don't know, second or so uh, in normal Mega Man mode, his, his emotions will fluctuate. It can be any emotion, right? So sometimes he's worried, you know, um, but oftentimes he can be rage mode or full synchro mode. Now we got to get lucky here. We got to wait and see. There we go. Look at that. Double damage for free. And look at that. Full sync is still going. Now, even though um, the emotions are changing in battle, all that matters is what happens when you press the button. So you don't need to worry too much. Look at that. Full sync right there. Full sync right there. How can you complain, folks, right? Um, it's basically free, right? Now, the only downside is your Navi Customizer setups with humor are really, really janky and awkward. Um, and because you um, cannot get emotions while you're in cross mode, it only works for baseline Mega Man. I can't wait to make a video on the power of regular baseline Mega Man because it is definitely something to worth noting. To, or to worth noting. Uh, something to... Something to... No, I guess that was right. Something to worth noting. Um, something that's worth noting. <laughs> um, but yeah, very, very powerful nonetheless. Super, super cool setup. Now, the last thing I want to tell you before I start showing you some builds of um, bugs in action is going to be this right here. So, I've told you that every program will give you a bug if it's bugged, but it will also give you the actual benefit of the program itself too. Well, that is actually not true for Rush, Beat, or Tango. This will not work. If Rush is bugged, he will not work. He will not trigger at all. Um, and that's the bug that you get associated with him. It's just, it just doesn't work. But if you throw in your bug stop, that will fix it completely. So no need to worry about it. But it is worth noting too, that even if you fix bug, using the chip bug fix will still not get rid of this, believe it or not. Bug fix is really interesting. And we can definitely talk about that in just a second. All right, folks, we're in a pretty good position here to bully this little nerd Aquaman using the chip static. This is a chip that gets better with more bugs. Normally, it's just the range of a tornado. In fact, it's almost identical to a tornado. However, the more unique bugs you have, the wider the range becomes. If you have three unique ones, you're going to have basically a life sword range, which is wild. And keep in mind, that's three unique bugs. So having a buster bug level three is going to help you the exact same amount as a buster bug level one. Um, that combos really nicely with this airspin right here. Airspin uh, will shoot out three times as a little obstacle. 
and it goes away pretty quickly, but if a tornado will hit it before it disappears, it's gonna shoot an extra eight times. Eight times 50 is 400, which is super solid. Plus, the static will hit the opponent as well because the range of the attack is wider. So let's go ahead and hit Aquaman here while he's in this little uh, position right here. Such a little nerd. We're gonna really deal a lot, but we gotta be really, really patient because of course, um, we're waiting for a full sink or an anger to take place from our opponents. Oh my gosh, there we go, hold up. We just gotta wait. We just gotta wait, there it is! Look at that damage, an instant delete. An instant delete with all of that damage we just did right there. It is a little bit tough to pull off in actual PvP, as you can imagine, but still, let's take a look at um, one last little case as well, using bug fix and hub batch when it comes to restoring your custom chips. Now, we're in a pretty awkward situation here uh, with our custom bug. It has been slowly decreasing our chips, and we're going to get a 3 this turn. However, even though we already have custom 3 uh, in our Navi customizer setup, Hub Batch is going to give us a new version of it. And for whatever reason, that is indeed uh, going to restock our chips almost all the way, at least give us an extra 3, which is pretty cool. I wouldn't have thought that, that it would just refresh it. I think it's pretty interesting. Now, uh, keep in mind as well that Bug Fix will do the same thing, and we're going to show um, a few interactions with that. As you saw in that earlier uh, clip of me bullying this little nerd, uh, Static does have basically a live sword range when um, you are able to have a lot of bugs. However, when you use the bug fix, it's going to go back to just a regular tornado range right here. But the cool thing about bug fix is even though we did just um, uh, fix all of our bugs, including the emotion bug, we're no longer flashing around as you've probably noticed. But not, but, you know, if you're using... Uh, the emotion bug, you probably don't want bug fix in general. However, um, the downside, or rather the upside of the Buster Blank bug, which is being able to do, uh, you know, charge shot damage with your regular attacks, is still there. Take a look at this, you guys. And since we've used Hub Batch, our Buster stats are at the max. We are never firing any more Blank shots, and we still have a good chance, a 3 out of 16 chance, of dealing Buster damage, which is just the best. All right, folks, the final thing I want to share in this video um, has to do with the humor glitch as well, the emotion glitch that we're going to be getting. You want to be really careful with Beast out there. are some really weird interactions. I'm going to make sure to hit the custom screen as soon as we're in that sort of anxious emotion right here. Yeah, take a look. So this is the same emotion that you get after three turns of Beast out. Obviously, we still have, you know, the number three that's next to us. However, we are unable to Beast out because that emotion does take priority. And when you're on the custom menu, time is stopped. Now, that can be taken to your advantage, too, because if the custom menu stops on a full sync or um, an angry motion, your time freeze chip that's going to activate right away will deal double damage, which is super cool. But let's take a peek uh, and see what happens when we are done using this, because there are some bad interactions as well with the Beast out. And there you have it, folks. We just ended our beast up mode. And take a look. Even though this is still the same Navi customizer setup, our emotions are no longer changing. We are indeed stuck in that sort of worried state that does take priority over all the other emotions. So if you are looking to take advantage of the humor glitch, definitely be wary of using Beast Out. Those are two things to keep in mind. And honestly, crosses are kind of scary too because you can stay in your cross forever unless you get hit by a weakness. So you'll never get access again to um, you know the ability to deal your double damage uh, pretty freely um, unless you get hit by the weakness or you know not, right? Because if you Beast Out, you're going to be back in that stuck spot. These cute little critters won my Mega Man tournament, and I'm going to show you how. This is the ultimate guide to the zoo. That's Rush, Feet, and Tango, those pesky little programs that you often find in Battle Network 6 PvP. We'll also be covering Thiago, a very skilled player, and his build that jammed all three of these programs into one Navi customizer, as well as his folder and some battles. If you're wondering, the Proto Cup was a tournament that I hosted live on Twitch. It was a standard Battle Network. 6 rule set and it featured really cool real life battle chip prizes including this proto man themed battle chip gate if you're interested in watching the tournament finale i've got the link right here Thiago versus honor knight was an amazing set and if you're interested in joining future tournaments or just learning more and supporting our channel please consider joining and subscribing we are on the road to 5k here on youtube and our discord is a really great spot to find all sorts of legacy collection battles we can't wait to have you there so what even is the zoo? Well, that's an unofficial term used by a lot of Battle Network 6 net battlers to talk about these three little creatures. Of course, you've got Rush the Dog, Beat the Bird, and Tango the Cat. Tango is not to be confused with the real-life program that's also called Tango and named after it. 
If you guys don't know the N1 Grand Prix, they are the International Battle Network community. They made this amazing program on your computer that allows you to battle other people with rollback netcode. If you haven't checked it out, definitely consider doing it. I've got a video right here that helps you walk through all the steps you need to set it up. In any case, the zoo animals all have a lot in common. The first thing is they definitely cannot be uninstalled by the opponent's battle chip. There's no way to destroy them, period. So you're going to have to play around them if you know that your opponent has them. Another thing that they all have in common is they only work in PvP. You're not going to be able to do any shenanigans against someone like, I don't know, Blastman in the middle of your game. But the most important thing about them is that they will not work period if they are glitched or bugged in the navi customizer they're the only programs that are like this by the way almost every program in the game will work even if it's bugged you'll just get an associated downside along with having the effect that you want i made a whole video on bugging the navi customizer and even the cases when you'd want to do it right here let's break down the programs and start with rush because he is the most common one rush is a really interesting chip in that the very first invis that your opponent would use instead of making them invincible will make them paralyzed this is deceptively strong in fact i used to think that rush was kind of bad because there are a lot of ways to play around it which we'll get into right here but keep in mind that rush is a lot especially for only two navi customizer blocks the most common way to get around rush is waiting to use your first invis right before the custom gauge fills up there's this trick in battle network 6 called a cross canceling and i'm going to make it as simple as possible if you transform into any cross or beast Mega Man's status will reset back to normal. If you're in the middle of attacking, you won't be anymore. And so if Rush paralyzes you, transforming will get you out of it. So in the worst case scenario, you can mitigate being stunned. And if your opponent doesn't have Rush when you use Invis at the end, well, then you just get to start the next round with some invincibility. That's pretty nice. There are other proactive ways to deal with Rush too. If you're in Tomahawk Cross, Rush won't paralyze you because he's got that status guard. The same is also true if you have a barrier or a life or a up. When you use that first invis, Rush will trigger, but you won't be stunned. This is helpful if you have first barrier installed in your Navi customizer. It's really common for those builds to jam an invis right away. However, you do have to be really careful about how fast you use that first invis. That's because there's a feature in Battle Network 6 called time freeze counters it's a bit of a complicated mechanic but it's a very important mechanic to cover in fact i have a whole video on it that you can check out right here the really short version of it is that there is a way to respond first to a time freezing chip right so if your opponent freezes time with a chip like area grab or life aura or a navi summon and you have an invis ready to go you could use your invis first and if you do end up doing that, you could actually stop the opponent from dealing you damage. It's a really neat little trick. So if your very first invis is a time freeze counter, so you're waiting for the opponent to blink first, rush will not trigger, right? That's both a good thing and a bad thing. The good thing is if you're a really patient player and you time out your invis such that you only ever use them in response to an opponent's time freezing chip, that means that you got all of your defenses in the match and Rush didn't do a darn thing. That's pretty great. In fact, it's a really good habit to be in as a player to try and wait to use your invis as opposed to just jamming it at the start of a fight because that means that your opponent could time freeze counter and you know be able to hit you before you get your invis off. I will say that it's not always realistic to pull that off, right? Because you can only guess what your opponent is bringing first as their chip. Even though I know that Invis is a chip that I want to wait for time freeze countering, um, sometimes you just have to run it out. And it's really important to do that because the worst thing that can happen to you is forgetting about Rush and being in the middle of the end game or uh, a really powerful turn for the opponent and ending up being paralyzed so that your opponent can wail on you. Um, so I would really be careful to try and use invis and proc rush right away. If you got that first barrier or if you're able to mitigate it by using your invis at the end of the turn, then that's really the best case scenario. Now, one last thing about being paralyzed by rush. This is a trick that very few people know about Battle Network 6. Did you know that you can actually mash inputs to get out of your paralysis a little bit faster. That's kind of a cool trick. Well, if you are getting rushed, that paralysis, if you don't mash any buttons whatsoever, and if you're in regular Mega Man mode, will actually give you just enough time 
to trigger the rage emotion. While you're in rage mode, you have temporary super armor and your next battle chip will deal double damage. So one thing that very savvy players can do if they have a feeling that their opponent has rush is to not transform at all, stay in regular Mega Man, Use your invis to get double damage on your next chip and maybe punish them with a really powerful, I don't know, Proto Man SP for double damage. It's a little bit tricky and risky because even with your double damage, the opponent could have their own invis or their own protection, but um, still, it's kind of a fun thing to keep in mind uh, and definitely something for pro players to consider. So is Rush any good? Yes, Rush is actually amazing, and the reason why is because even though there are so many ways to deal with the paralysis, Rush for only two Navi Customizer blocks is going to cut one of your opponent's best chips from the folder completely. That's basically the worst case scenario. Well, I guess the worst case scenario is your opponent has the tying to time freeze counter every single one of their invises. That's the worst case scenario, but not very realistic. I would say the more likely worst case scenario is um, the opponent loses an invis. They don't really get paralyzed because they cross cancel or they're in Tomahawk or whatever, um, but they lose one of their best chips uh, in their entire folder. And if you're playing a strategy like Gregor Colonel Force that really, really does not want the opponent to have any invis around, Rush is basically a necessity. If you're playing a folder that's really fast and aggressive and does not want the opponent to have a lot of opportunities to stop you from dealing damage, Rush for only two blocks is basically a total staple. Um, in fact, because it's only two blocks, it's really easy to slot in Rush in your Navi Customizer without it being bugged and therefore not having to use the really bulky bug stop program uh, as a result of having it. Now, the Bluebird Beat is very similar to Rush. He will trigger off the first Mega or Giga chip that the opponent tries to use. Instead of getting that chip, Beat will swoop in, steal it away, and they'll never see it ever again. This is very, very powerful. Even if you know that Beat is being had by the opponents, you still have to be really careful because you're not able to use those really powerful chips that you see early on in your folder. You're going to have to throw away something on the weaker side, like maybe your Judge Man Star or your Element Man Star. Um, and even in the very worst case scenario, that's still a chip that you want to have in your folder, right? If your opponent is trying to steal a bunch of area, being able to throw away a Judge Man is one of the last things that you want to be doing, right? Um, now, you can play around Beat in the same way as Rush in that you can time freeze counter your first Mega or Giga chip and Beat will not trigger. However, most folders have five Mega chips and they have their one Giga chip. So to be able to time freeze counter all six of your chips in one match is very, very unlikely. In fact, I'd be really careful about time freeze countering uh, with Beat in play because the worst thing you can do is forget about it, right? You might think that you've triggered Beat uh, by bringing in some earlier Mega Chips early on. And we did uh, proc the beat already. Wait, didn't I? I thought I did proc the beat! But uh, then you've got your Hub Batch or your powerful Giga Chip, and the, a little blue bird will just come in and swoop it away. It is backbreaking not having your Giga Chip uh, or having a powerful chip at your disposal. That's really the only way to play around it, though, is by time freeze countering. So Beat is very obnoxious. He has double the size of Rush at four blocks, but he is like four times as powerful. It's extremely obnoxious to deal with, and I would highly recommend slotting in Beat for yourself if you think that you can catch the opponent off guard. And even if you can't, they're still going to have a hard time playing around it. Now, the last zoo program is the Green Kitty Tango. When you're at low HP, Tango will stop time. He'll heal you for 300, and he'll also give you a barrier 100. Now, for a lot of reasons, Tango is not seen nearly half as much as Beat or Rush, and the main reason it's a lot weaker is because the size of the Tango program is so big and bulky, and because of that size, it's not likely that you could actually slot in Tango in your Navi Customizer without it being bugged. If you are putting out your program off the grid, that is instantly going to have a bug, and in the case of Tango, it will not work whatsoever. So you're going to have to pair Tango with Bug Fix, which is a ton of space in your Navi Customizer that you are never going to get back. If you stop and think about it, getting a Recover 300 is kind of nice, but it's not actually that different than just having HP plus 300, which is a lot more reasonable to actually fit in your Navi Customizer. Now, the Barrier 100 that you get is great, right? Because if the game goes to time, that Barrier 100 is actually preventing damage that is being uh, used against you, which is super, super relevant when it comes to determining who's going to be the winner. However, the Barrier 100 uh, can also be blown away by Tengu. Um, you can also use a Wind Rack to get rid of it. Um, and 100 is not necessarily, you know, the most amount of damage that you're going to be soaking up. In fact, getting that Barrier 100 can at times be really awkward. Let's say you've got a Life Aura up. There are some really fringe scenarios where getting the Barrier 100 from Tengu will actually replace the Life Aura that you have. 
Now, that's going to be uh, getting hit by a chip like Gundale Soul, which pierces through uh, the life aura in the first place, therefore triggering uh, Tengo. Um, and I guess another scenario would be if you try to use life aura, the opponent time freeze counters to hit you first, then your life aura comes up and then Tengo triggers and um, replaces it. Uh, it's not super likely that it happens, but it can happen. And it is a really, really unfortunate thing when it does. And the last thing about Tengo that's not the best is that there are times there, Tango will just not do anything. If your opponent has a powerful multi-hitting chip that time freezes or a really powerful chip in general, it's possible they can just delete you in one chip and Tango will just not do anything in the fight whatsoever. That being said, Tango is powerful in a lot of circumstances if you can build around it. And thankfully, we've got a Navi customizer that can not only do just that, but also fit in those other little zoo animals as well. Let's take a peek. The Navi Customizer sometimes feels overlooked. This is that grid-based power-up system that's going to give you all the programs that Mega Man needs to win in each of your net battles. Now, in this video, we're going to be covering a few different things. The first is a great program that's going to help you optimize your Navi Customizer layouts depending on the programs that you want to use. And two, we're going to be covering the meta builds, the builds that have kind of proven themselves the most and see the most play in tournaments. Now, keep in mind, this is not going to cover every build that exists. In fact, one one of the greatest joys of the Navi Customizer is coming up with new builds of your own, and I think there's a lot of room for interpretation and a lot of room to optimize and innovate, especially depending on the folder you've got. So if you've got a build that you particularly love, do leave a comment down below and let us know. But getting right into it, let's just go ahead and take a look at this wonderful spot here. So this is called merkland.github.io. Of course, I'm going to leave a link in the comments below. And I don't actually know who made this. I'm sure it's a Japanese um, community because um, a lot of it is in Japanese. But but again, um, it's a really, really powerful thing. I'm just going to show you how it works, right? So we're going to start off by clicking a program. How about Super Armor? A total staple you're going to see in just about every build. Boom, right there. So this is not super helpful, right? Because it's just, you know, one program on the grid. There's a million ways to, um, to lay it out. But things get more interesting when we start throwing more programs in. So how about Custom 2? That's pretty solid. Or how about First Barrier? What if we try to slide in a Giga Folder one, right? Or maybe... Uh, an HP plus 500. How about we go ahead and, and again, look at this. Look at there's so many permutations and computations that are possible. Um, but, uh, and how about we do something over here, like maybe attack max. That's pretty common for Gregor. And maybe, uh, I don't know. Why don't we go ahead and see if we can slot in air shoes. Is that even possible? No, it's not, right? So you can see right away, if you want all um, seven of these programs that are on the grid, that's unfortunately not possible. But, you know, hey, if we were to maybe um, take out Giga Folder 1 and then throw the air shoes back in, you know, let's see if there are some um, opportunities for that. And yes, there are. So again, a super, super cool feature right here. I mean, you can see, look at that, an empty space. That's perfect for undershirt. You know, that's a really easy way, you know, to sort of innovate on that. Um, and you can start to get a really good sense of all the options that are available for the Navi Customizer. Again, it's a really, really cool tool. I'm a big shout out to everyone who did it. If anyone knows in the comments, I'd love to know and give them uh, the proper credit they deserve. But I think every Mega Man Battle Network 6 fan should know about it. And look at that. They even do BN5 and BN4 as well, which I think is super cool i guess bn3 uh maybe is not as exciting when it comes to the navi coast i don't know um but with that being said let's go ahead and get right into um our first build at the moment so this is going to be um a gregor build i'm starting with gregor because gregor has got um you know, I don't want to call them uh requirements but uh they kind of feel like it um between attack max uh, which is, of course, you know, instantly making your buster level 5, right, for your, um, you know, your beast buster spam, um, powering up your beast charge attacks like the erase kill arrow, um, powering up your slash cross, which is a really powerful win condition for Gregor. You know, attack max is pretty much um, a slam dunk staple. Um, and then, of course, um, uh, you know, super armor, which I guess, you know, is not even just a Gregor thing. That's just a, you know, a Gregor, or that's just a thing in general. Um, I would say Rush is maybe up there. You don't need need Rush, um, but I think Gregor really likes it because um, you really are going to be... I mean, let's be real. You're probably running Colonel Force. One of the best ways to stop a Colonel Force is an Invis, and Rush is a great way to take out one Invis from their folder and make it a little bit more awkward when you're trying to set up that Colonel Force win. Sometimes um, they even forget about it, right? Sometimes people forget about Rush and you just get a lot of free charge damage or some free punishments. Uh, it does a lot of good value for two blocks. I used to be a Rush hater because I felt like it was easy to play around Rush. Um, in fact, we got a whole video on Rush um, as well as Beat and Tango, which are similar zoo animal um, programs. Uh, I'm going to leave a little link right there if you'd like to check it out. I would highly recommend it. These are really, really interesting and intricate programs but anyway um, they're super super cool right and um, I think between those um, there are uh, not nearly as many options for Gregor um, especially if you want the air shoes right now this is why it's called Gregor air shoes um, unlike 
Falzar version, which has got Tengu Cross to give air shoes or the Falzar Beast out to give the air shoes. Gregor really only has this program. That's just the only thing that's um, available for it, unfortunately. Um, so when it comes to, you know, a lot of um, the zone control options that exist, uh, maybe the opponent uses Get In, or maybe, um, you know, they like chips like Elect Dragon, which is cracking panels, or Magnum, which is destroying holes, or even Justice One, which is cracking a whole bunch of stuff. Um, you can get yourself into really awkward situations if you don't have the air shoes, right? So it's really, really powerful for that. Um, now, there are downsides to this build, I will say, uh, right off the bat, air shoes can get uninstalled, right? So, if you do, um, unfortunately, get uh, hit with a chip that is going to uninstall you, you know, all of a sudden, um, you know, that strategy that you had in terms of, you know, uh, being able to dodge the holes uh, that the opponent is trying to throw out is just instantly gone, and that kind of stinks. Um, a fun thing about uninstall, by the way, Rush does not get uninstalled, so, um, you know, your opponent is still going to have to deal with that. In fact, really, um, only Super Armor and Uninstall, um, I'm sorry, and Air Shoes are getting uninstalled from this build. But they're both pretty relevant, right? You really don't want to get hit by Uninstall if you're running this. Um, and of course, just to kind of round it out too, we've got Custom. Uh, we got our Charge Max, um, which I would say is also probably a staple with Gregor. Attack Max, I think, a little bit more so. But uh, Charge Max, again, for the, uh, for only three blocks, you know, maximizing the speed of your power. Um, of the, I'm sorry, maximizing the speed of your um, Charge Shots is... Really, really powerful. Um, and gang, uh, you may be thinking to yourself, what the heck, like you can go off the grid? Like I've never seen this before. Yeah, so in Battle Network 6 and only Battle Network 6, you can go off the grid. You do get bugs for doing so. And we've got a whole video on bugs as well. I would seriously, seriously recommend it um, because bugs are not that scary. In fact, there are some bugs that are actually beneficial. If you're afraid of bugs, this build might be good for you because we've got bug stuff here to stop them all completely. But again, don't be afraid. Many, many Navi customizer builds don't um, care about bugs. In fact, they're really happy to throw in the chip bug fix in their folder, you know, to get rid of a lot of the bugs um, and preserve really cool ones like the Buster Bug. But anyway, bug fix is in here. Um, you're going to see bug fix um, basically get thrown in the corner almost all the time. And that's why, um, I'm sorry, the reason why is because, of course, you can't actually use these corner slots for whatever reason. Um, so this is basically as optimal as it gets, right? Um, and, of course, there's a lot of, you know, cool spacing you can do with it. So if you're ever going to use bug stop, it's probably going to be in this corner spot right here. Um, again, yeah, that's pretty much um, the first of these uh, Gregor builds. It's a little bit more interesting. Now, you're a little, you're giving up on HP, right? You're only 1,500 total, um, you know, with this build. But, again, you have the air shoes. And I think... Picking a folder to complement this, you probably want to be running Get In yourself. You know, obviously you can run Air Shoes um, if you think maybe your metagame with the tournament you're participating in has a lot of like, you know, holy, not holy like holy panels, but you know, whole dash Y, holy um, strategies, you know, zone control strategies. You know, you could do it as kind of like a, a counter pick, like a meta pick. But I think if you're going to uh, take the time and effort, you know, to really use the air shoes in your build, you probably want to be running Get In yourself. Um, and I think that's a pretty cool option. I bet, uh, you know, you could really catch a lot of people off guard uh, in Gregor, you know, if you can put them in an awkward situation and really take advantage of your charge shots or some other powerful chips. So that's uh, Gregor in a nutshell, Gregor air shoes. Next up for Gregor, we've got the Gregor tank build, right? So this is saying no thank you to air shoes. That's saying, look, I don't care if they use Get In. I don't care if they use zone control. I'm just going to live through it, right? This has got a ton of HP, right? You've got 400 here, 300 there, and 500 there. That's capping out at 2200 HP total, which is a lot to deal with. Of course, we got our super armor. Again, you're going to see super armor in every single build. Super armor is going to stop you from getting flinched backward, which is basically necessary to dodge a lot of attacks and make sure you don't just get punished all the time. Or even like preserving your charge shot, right? If you're trying to charge up an attack and you get hit first, you know, you're never going to be able to maintain it, right? So it's a super, super uh, crucial. I would say people play uninstalled just to get rid of super armor. You know, if they can get rid of other stuff like air shoes, that's a, that's a benefit. But, uh, but yeah, really annoying stuff right there. Um, custom 1, of course, we want extra chips. Custom 1's another one you're going to see in a lot of builds. Same thing, Custom 1 or Custom 2. We have exactly one build I can think of that's really fun um, that doesn't use Custom at all, but that's for a very specific reason that we'll be covering when we get there. Um, undershirt, again, for only one program slot, um, you're going to see a lot of really good value. We all know that it's really nice to, uh, to not die uh, in one hit. And, of course, we've got the attack max and charge max. So, yeah, um, not as much to say here. This, um, of course, is a lot tankier, literally, right? So, um, 2200 HP, a lot harder to die. This is a lot more resilient to uninstalling, right? So, um, you're not you're less all-in. And I think that this is a pretty good build um, if you're running a, something a little bit more standard when it comes to Grigor, right? If you're not, you know, choosing to run, um, you know, spicy tech like Geddon, Ingredin, um, <laughs> in Gregor, I think that this is probably going to be a, a more ideal build for you. And I think the results really prove themselves. Um, a lot of our winning Gregor builds in more recent tournaments have indeed run this exact same build. 
Okay, starting off with Falzo, we're doing my own personal bias build. I really enjoy um, Bug Death Thunder a lot, and this is really a build that is specific to the folder, right? Unlike Gregor, um, where you saw some options that had a little bit more flexibility, I would say that this folder is pretty much tied to the strategy of having an extra Giga chip, um, in this in this case, you know, Bug Death Thunder, and um, also being able to use Hub Batch, right? So in this case, the Giga Folder 1 um, is a pretty decently sized uh, part. It's pretty chunky, but if you consider um, the ability of having the hub batch in your folder that you wouldn't normally have, hub batch gives you like 80 programs, and that's an exaggeration, but prog uh, it gives you a ton and ton of um, extra value, including things like the maximum buster stats, right? So if you're ever in a position where your bug death thunder is not that helpful, um, you can still try to win through, bu uh, through your buster effects. And actually, this is a build that's very specifically taking advantage of that. So we are very intentional here when it comes to um, the different slots that we've got to, uh, you know, to use our um, uh, our bugs, right? So speed plus one are both being glitched here, right? These are both intentionally being glitched. The reason why is because we want the buster bug. Again, definitely consider checking out that video um, if you're not really sure what I'm talking about. Um, but we are doing that on purpose and we're putting in speed here instead of charge because we want the maximum, like if we fire the button as fast as possible, you know, we want to be able to fish as quickly as possible for, um, you know, procs that are going to get rid of anti-damage and things like that. Again, definitely consider checking out that video. Uh, but if you want charge, you know, instead of speed, you totally could. I think that's really defensible. Again, we got our super armor and um, first barrier does wonders in this folder, right? So this is a, really a strategy that's trying to go turn one, dust, you know, full cust right away and start digging, digging, digging ASAP to find the Bug to Thunder and find the Hub Batch. Those are both really powerful Giga chips that you want to see sooner than later. The first barrier does wonders, right? It's going to prevent you um, from the opponent just, you know, using a turn one, a race man and getting rid of your um, your cross. Um, it's also kind of annoying to deal with, right? Uh, you know, oftentimes the opponent has to use a charge shot or, you know, fish for a lot of P shots that they want to get rid of it. Um, sometimes the first barrier will just straight up stop and attack completely, which is uh, really, really cool. Again, for only three blocks, um, I think it's pretty, pretty powerful stuff. And of course, we got custom too because we want to dig as much as possible. So again, I think this is really um, a solid, uh, you know, Navi customizer build in terms of really complementing a folder, right? This is a very specific folder um, with Bug Death Thunder, and um, this is going to have a perfect Navi customizer build to complement it. But, you know, you could adapt it a little bit too. Maybe you wanted, you know, if you want uh, maybe... I don't know, Hub Batch and Meteor Knuckle uh, as two of your chips. Um, I think this could be a cool thing. Or maybe, I don't know, you're playing on the rank ladder and you're, you know, you're going to be using something crazy like Falls RX or something. Uh, this could be something you might consider. All right, next up, we've got a really fun looking build right here. This is going to be using a lot of different colors, but of course it doesn't matter too much because we've got the bug stop to prevent it. Um, this is a build that is basically all in on custom three. We've got uh, the two of them right here, custom one and custom two, um, which do, of course, take up a good chunk of space. We've also got Rush and Beat, which are fun, pesky little programs. Uh, we've talked about Rush a decent bit. Beat is really cool. He's going to stop the first mega or even giga chip that the opponent uses. Really, really obnoxious and hard to play around. It's super, super good if you can pull it off, even when the opponent knows you've got it. Again, it's really hard to actually deal with properly so that's always helpful super armor of course not much to say now a fun thing about this build is that it's using actual attack pluses that's not something you see every day obviously we've seen a lot of attack maxes or you know that's actually kind of you know the general uh you know state of things in my opinion right gregor is just running attack max because that's going to save you one block uh you know compared to using four different attack plus ones or you know falzo is going to be running maybe hub batch to give you all the buster stats so this is kind of a fun build and that you are actually running attack ones here so if you're thinking about what kind of strategy this would be, okay, well, if it's custom three, you know, you do, you want to be digging a lot. So maybe it's like a destroy pulse folder, trying to assemble something like that, or maybe even poison pharaohs, some sort of, um, you know, program advance that could be really, really powerful. But again, you know, since you've got the actual attack um, stats in your build, you know, you're probably not actually running hub batch as your giga ship. Maybe it's something more like, you know, meter knuckle or something. So again, a pretty cool setup here. Um, and yeah, this is definitely something that's just solid altogether. And last but not least, we've got a really, really fun build. This is called the zoo because it uses every single zoo animal. We've talked about rush and we even talked about um, beat a little bit. This is tango. Okay. Tango is really, really big and awkward. It's got such a strange shape. And an annoying fact about these little zoo pieces is unless you've got um, the bugs fix, uh, the, sorry, the bug stop program, you cannot bug them at all or they will just not work, okay? That's not true of any other Navi customizer part in the game. It's only true of those zoo pieces. Um, and that's and actually, even if you use the chip uh, bug fix, they still uh, will not work for you. So you really need bug, uh, bug stop in order to make it work. And so think about that for a second, right? This is a build that's jamming all three of these, uh, you know, zoo pieces in here. As well as bug stop, there's not a lot of room for space beyond that, right? So it is actually nice that we do end up getting a decent chunk of HP as well as super armor um, and even a little first barrier right here. 
Obviously hard to tell with um, you know the blue spots that are together, but these are two um, separate spots. Now, um, this is a really, really cool build for a number of reasons, right? First of all, no custom. Absolutely no custom, right? Like, that's pretty scary. And no buster stats either. And there's not even undershirt, right? I mean, this is really about as optimized as you can get if you want to run every single one of the zoo programs. You know, programs like Tango are really strong, um, but of course, they are really weird and janky and hard to fit in. So this is a build that has a lot of power behind it in running all of them. But actually, stop and think for even an extra second. This is actually a build, even beyond um, the zoo, that takes like literally squeezes the most maximum value you could you you know you possibly can out of on um, the chip hub batch right normally hub batch you know you're giving you custom three you know attack max uh speed max charge max air shoes flow shoes whatever right it's giving all those pieces actually even gives you undershirt funny enough so in this case this is a build that is squeezing literally everything right because there's not even a custom one or a custom two right you know normally you know those um you know maybe the custom three is not as impactful as some of the other programs but in this case it's super impactful because you've only got five chips in your draw and that means the rest of your folder needs to be fluid right you cannot be jamming alphabet soup in here you know you really probably i mean i would assume you want to uh, grab hub batch as soon as possible you know like most other builds right you can get the most value out of your buster stats and everything right so um this is if you want to build a folder like this obviously you need hub batch and you really want to make sure that you're mostly on one code so that you can cycle 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 um Again, it's going to be really hard to actually find the hub batch, you know, even with Dust Cross, um, if the rest of your folder is kind of janky, because having only five chips on your draw is a definite, definite downside. But what, do you, what can you do in this moment? It's, yeah, it's starting no, to get it's... a little dicey. I oh, think God. this is it. Ah! Trying to the law! There the it is. The one, two, did. Down the dream. This is the momentum that Thiago has been looking for. Is it going to be able to propel him forward? Look oh, at this. this. Coming race, man. This is the situation ah! he wanted. What an actual. What can you oh my with gosh. See that no way. way. <laughs> and there it is. Patiently waiting for his opportunity to bring it into game three. The Proto Cup tournament finale was amazing, but let's stop and think for a second. How did Thiago manage to pull up that comeback? Now, he was pretty much down for most of the game, and you can tell me it was all Muramasa, and that's mostly right. Muramasa did hit for 1,000 damage with only one chip, which meant other powerful options like Ground Man SP were able to get that kill. But let's rewind the clock a little bit. Take a peek. Honornet was in such a good position. The life lead was massive, and he had anti-damage up for defense, plus the beast charge for Tengu is super powerful. However, Thiago was able to leverage the power of Invis by using it twice, and by using Fast Cage, he was not only able to dig faster for his powerful chips, but he was also able to squeeze the most advantage out of Invis and its invincibility as possible. This is such a great example of the importance of defense in Battle Network 6 PvP. In my opinion, the Muramasa swing was super important, but we wouldn't have even gotten there if it weren't for the power of defense and invis in particular. So if we stop and think about it, we know that invis and anti-damage and life or and barrier, these are all very great chips. We see them in every single folder, but why exactly are they so great? What happens if we decide to not run any at all? Well, actually I commentated a Japanese tournament about two weeks ago, and in that very event, there were basically no defensive chips allowed whatsoever. If you're curious what happened, it was pretty much this. Wow. Side note, it's actually kind of wild how powerful Super Vulcan is when you don't have to worry about the opponent throwing up a barrier or whatever, but that notwithstanding, I think the biggest takeaway of that tournament was if you were in a losing position, it was basically impossible to claw your way back to a victory. That's how important defensive chips are. In this video, we're going to be covering exactly why that's important and how you can use different types of chips to be able to mount a comeback. So how does one even enter a losing state in the first place? If you think about it, in battle Battle Network 6, you both start at an equal footing, you and your opponent. Now, it's true that some folders might be inherently stronger or a Navi customizer might be more efficient, but let's not think about that for the minute. It's by using your crosses, by leveraging your movements, and by using powerful chips better than the opponents that one player begins to take an advantage over the other. Now, it's not like that's the end-all be-all. It's very possible for the other player to seize back the control, but if you stop to really think about it, it's not possible for both players to have the advantage. You're either at a pretty equal state or one person has got some sort of lead, whether it's small or whether it's big. A few ways you can tell if a player has the advantage is 
Are you hitting them with a ton of damage, maybe hitting them for a powerful weakness? Or perhaps one player is leaving a lot of chips on the table and wasting them by grabbing four or five chips and not actually using them in the round. Or maybe the opponent is able to use a chip like Life Aura to invalidate two or three chips in a round. That can happen too. It's not always easy to look at just these things because sometimes HP can get in the way. Like for example, it's true that a player who has less HP is closer to dying, but if you look at the initial setups, a lot of powerful builds can run up to 1500 HP, and that doesn't mean that that's inherently weaker than something like a 2600 HP build. In fact, if I went against someone with 2600 HP, that would tell me that they're giving up a lot of equity. Maybe they're not running super armor, or maybe they're not running custom. Just having more HP is not the same thing as winning, and that is actually a really, really important aspect. Just because you're not dying doesn't mean that you're actually winning. You can have your life aura or all your great defenses, but if your buster stat isn't great and you don't have a lot of good attacks to use with it, then you're not really taking advantage of any sort of situation. So let's talk about defenses. Invis is a very common staple in the Battle Network series. It lasts for about six seconds and it gives you invincibility to most attacks, not all of them. Now that's just an average use of Invis to really squeeze the most value out of it. Your one Invis should be able to shut down at least one really powerful attack. And a good way to do that is by using a time freeze counter or a TFC, which we covered in this video right here. Now, the power of Invis changes pretty dramatically depending on the length of the round or therefore the length of the custom gauge. Normally, a round is about 8 seconds long, so Invis is about 3 fourths of that. But imagine a fast gauge which is only 4 seconds long. Now, that 6 second Invis is not only lasting the entire round but also double dipping a little bit into the next one. That means that it's really easy to be fluid with your attacks and you can put your opponent into a really difficult situation where you're constantly recycling your defenses while you're opponent is playing catch up. Now, on the other hand, a slow gauge changes the custom gauge length to be about 17 seconds long. Now it's a lot weaker to have an invis up because your opponent can just wait out the attacks and not have to worry about all of their options being invalidated. On the other hand, we have Life Aura, and you're going to see shortly that it's kind of the opposite of Invis. So Life Aura shuts down all attacks under 200 damage, which is actually quite a few. You can easily catch an opponent off guard with a Life Aura and ruin their entire set of chips if they're not prepared. Now, Life Aura is balanced by the fact that it's pretty easy to get rid of, and because it's so powerful, every single folder is going to run it, and therefore every folder is going to have an answer to it. You've got Wind Wreck, which instantly blows it away with wind chips, and if you're in Falls Our Version, using Tengu Cross can also instantly get rid of Life Aura. Now, if you're in a fast gauge, that means the opponent is going to be able to dig very quickly into their answer and be able to get rid of the Life Aura. Life Aura is best when you're able to surprise the opponent, and if they're on a slow gauge turn where you have maximum time to use your powerful charge attacks, you are going to gain a huge advantage from using it. So that's why it's the opposite of Invis in that a fast gauge is amazing for Invis, but really bad for Life Aura, and the opposite is true with a slow gauge. The last of the very common defensive chips is anti-damage, which is going to stop one attack over 10 damage and deal 100 at the opponent. You can see I'm trying so hard to get that double damage rage buff, but it's not working because of anti-damage. My buster shots aren't working and he can even stack it with a barrier. Because of this stipulation, it's actually kind of hard for the opponent to deal with an anti-damage, especially if they're in a beast mode. If you got no charge shots, you're pretty much going to have to use your actual chip to get rid of that anti-damage, heaven forbid the opponent uses a time freeze counter to not only stop your attack but also deal some damage, and hey, that shuriken is actually a sword attack so you can deal double damage and decross a tengu. Now there is a glaring weakness with anti-damage and that is cursor attacks. In Battle Network 6, all of the trap chips that you set with question marks like anti-sword or whatever are all broken through if they are hit by a cursor attack. That's why machine guns are so popular. Not only are they really hard to dodge, you're doing damage to someone with an anti-damage, you're destroying it, and you're also decrossing dust cross and ground cross. Wow. Now, for whatever reason, the erase cross charge attack is not actually cursor damage damage is the only cross that's like that. I think it's probably because they thought it'd be too easy to penetrate through anti-damage if it were a cursor, but whatever. Now, that being said, Erase Beast and its killer tail does do cursor damage, and it also goes through Invis. Wow, what a powerful attack. And hey, Erase Man himself is the behemoth of a chip he is because he goes through 
both invis and anti damage. In fact, he also goes through shield, so the only way to stop him is with a barrier chip. And barriers are great because they are so good at actually stopping attacks. If you think about anti damage, one of the weaknesses of it is being able to be hit by a charge attack. Barrier 100 and especially Barrier 200 are not quite in that same camp. They share a weakness with Life Aura, but if you are packing barriers in your build and you have sword chips to punish the opponent, you can really set yourself up for a great situation. I really hate having to deal with barriers myself. Now, if you remember our video on the Navi Customizer and its bugs, you'll remember that you get a particular one for having five or more colors in your Navi Customizer. If you have exactly five, you'll start the battle with a random status condition for about five seconds, and if you have six colors, you'll start the battle off with ten. Now, you're usually getting something like blinding, which is not very good, but there's a good chance that you'll get invincibility from invis, or you'll even get green invincibility, which cannot be penetrated whatsoever. It is absolutely difficult for your opponent to deal with one of these things right off the bat. Heaven forbid you combine them with something like a fast gauge to really speed up and lengthen the amount of value that you get off of a totally free invincibility. Now, not every folder can really run this it requires a very specific navi customizer build but hey if you like rolling dice that might be something to keep in mind and on the subject of the navi customizer let me tell you something as a falzar player who doesn't run attack because i love to use hub batch for my buster stats first barrier is so obnoxious to deal with you might think that only having 10 damage for that barrier is not much to deal with but unless you've got a multi-hitting attack or you're willing to go straight into tengu cross or even use your wind rack you're basically going to lose one fully powered attack to the first barrier and first barrier gets an extra bonus in ironically falls are because it's really great at protecting your dust cross in fact a lot of strategies are really reliant on using dust cross and being able to cycle away all their chips to hit something powerful like a bug death thunder or a hub badge both of which are strategies that i love to use and let me tell you fast barrier is very very good for it and look at the end of the day if you're in a losing position you really have two options you can either perfectly dodge every attack the opponent does or you can give yourself a buffer that you can then use to launch your offensive comeback. And remember, I said this already, but it's so important. Just because you're using defenses doesn't mean you're actually winning the game unless you have buster stats or powerful chips to back it up. You really want to make sure that you're taking advantage of those brief windows of opportunity when you're invincible to make sure that you can clinch the game. So what exactly is a time freeze counter? You may have played all the Battle Network games, but if you've never played PvP, you may not have ever heard this term. Well, a time freeze counter, or a TFC, is the foundation of PvP. It's a mechanic you only find when you're playing against a real person. But before we dive deep into why time freeze counters are so important, let's take a look at what a time freeze chip is. Most of the chips you use in BN6 are fired in real time, but a good amount of them will turn the screen dark, say their name, and then do an effect. In this mode, your opponents can't move around, so if you chose the right chip in the right position, it's guaranteed to hit, right? Well, not entirely. If you're playing against a real person and you also have a time freeze chip, you can actually respond by cutting in first. That means that the last person will actually use their chip first, and that can often mean that the first person's strategy is completely ruined. Think about it. In our earlier folder video, we talked a lot about the importance of invis and anti-damage. These are defensive chips, but they also stop time. That means if your opponent uses a powerful Giga chip and you have your invis ready to go, you can completely stop them from doing it and get a huge advantage. In a lot of ways, TFCs are kind of like the stack from Magic the Gathering, but it's a lot more stressful. That's because your reaction time is key. You have to use your chip while the opponent's chip name is being displayed, which means you have about a second or so to process what your opponent is using and decide whether or not it's worth countering. Now, for the most part, this doesn't matter too much, and I'll get into that in just a bit, but it is something important to think about. I have a pretty bad habit of just snap countering every single chip that I see. It's something I'm working on because that's not always the play. But hey, here's four other important things you should know about time freeze counters. The first is you can go absolutely nuts with counters. You can counter their counter and they can counter that counter you countered. However, all the earlier chips used by both players will disappear and only the final two will work. The second is you can always respond to your opponent's time freeze chip even if you're stunned or frozen or whatever. 
This means that real-time chips are a lot better to punish foes in a tough position because otherwise you might give them the opportunity to use an invis. The third is, anti-navi is technically a time freeze counter. That means you should be extra careful using it or you might lose a valuable chip. To paint a picture, let's say your anti-navi is active and you use life aura, but then your opponent responds with a navi chip, your anti-navi triggers in response, so while you steal the opponent's chip, you also lose your first precious chip. Then finally, there's beat and rush. These are navi customizer programs that only work in PvP and disrupt your opponent for using certain chips. However, neither one of them will trigger if your opponent TFCs you. If you fight a careful and patient foe, your cute little animals might not work at all. And that's really the main takeaway of this video. Patience is key. If you have a powerful time freeze chip, you're better off waiting for your opponent to blink first. That way, even if they respond back to the initial one with a bit of defense, they're going to have to throw away a chip in the process. This becomes even more important if you're using chips like invis or anti-damage. I oftentimes see new players just jamming those chips at the start of a round, and while that's okay, those chips are at their best potential when they're completely nullifying an opponent's attack and catching them off guard. There's actually a lot more to say about TFCs that becomes a bit more nuanced like sequencing your chips in a round, but we'll save that for a future video. In short, time freeze counters are the glue that holds a fair and balanced format together. It's the reason why older Battle Network games like BN2 just aren't really that competitive. It's so hard to balance around a metagame where you're just mashing the A button as fast as you can to get your time freeze counter before the opponent's. If you're not as interested in BN6 PvP, but you want to try your hand at some other formats, try Battle Network 4 or 5. These also have time freeze counters, and you'd be amazed what a difference they make. Mr. Famous is kind of a weak card. I know, it sounds crazy. He gives you an extra 3 custom chips, an extra 2 mega chips, an extra 2 giga chips, and you start the battle off with a free life aura. But he also costs 69 out of 80 megabytes. What if I told you there were cards that do something similar to Mr. Famous but are way cheaper? That means you can still access some of the patch card format's strongest abilities like status guard, chip recovery, and having a powerful new buster attack. But before we get into that, we are so close to 3,000 subscribers, I can almost taste it. If you enjoy our tournaments and info, please consider joining our community. We've got our patch card tournament coming up soon, as well as our first Pokemon Showdown tournament that's happening on August 12th. We can't wait to see you there. In any case, patch cards are a really overwhelming format. There are over 118 different card effects. Many of them are outclassed by others. Sometimes it's really obvious. No one's ever using heavy because attack plus one and super armor are already enabled on Needler, which has even more abilities and costs even less. Who balanced that? But sometimes it's not so obvious. Let's take a look at Hetty. At a first glance, he reads pretty strong. You get first barrier 100 and charge max, but the most important ability by far is his air shoes. You see, in the patch card format, many abilities have downsides that allow other abilities to get disabled. If you want to use the powerful Planet Man, for example, you also give up using air shoes. Or, so you'd think, but it actually turns out that the order in which you download the patch cards matters. For example, yes, Planet Man does shut off air shoes, but if you start with him first and then add another card that enables air shoes after him, you do actually end up with that ability. So, heading back to Hetty, it's cool that you get other effects, but at the end of the day, turning on air shoes is probably the most important thing for you, especially if you're trying to use other powerful patch cards that say no to air shoes. With that in mind, let me show you Satala. For only 8 megabytes, you get air shoes and you also get speed max as a bonus. With that space that you saved, it's easy to slot in the extremely powerful totem for 40 HP chip recovery. To put it in perspective, you've got 30 chips in your folder, so if every single one of those chips healed you for 40, that's 1200 life over the course of the entire game just for using your battle chips. That seems a lot stronger than just a barrier 100, right? Now, it's not just Satala that's good for air shoes. For only four more megabytes jumping from 8 to 12, you can also gain access to Risky Honey as a back B shield command. This honeycomb spits out more bees the more it gets hit, so if your opponent's in B stout spamming their buster, you can punish them really hard with infinite Risky Honeys. It's a great surprise way to win a game. 
Then there's also Tengu Man, who I love tremendously. He gives you beat as well as air shoes, but his best selling point is infinite wind wrecks as your charge shot. You can always kill life auras and barriers. You can push the foe back to grab more area or even reclaim your own. Tengu Man's just a great card that you can build an entire strategy around. But at the end of the day, if all you want is air shoes, then using saddle is great because the extra 12 megabytes you save can be used on really powerful effects. That's why Mr. Famous isn't busted. Starting with a life aura is pretty cool, but every folder is prepared for that chip. They have Tengu Cross or multiple wind racks or just powerful chips in general to kill it. So if you're hungry for something like that, why don't we try using Freeze Man? He gives you Barrier 200, which is pretty similar, but even better than that, your regular P-Shot Buster can spam ice panels all throughout the opponent's stage. That means your opponent's slipping around, and it means if you're an Aqua Cross, your Charge Shot can get easy freezes while your regular Buster can set it up. That's so strong, and it only costs you 30 megabytes. So if you really want to be using Mr. Famous, you're probably focusing on the extra two Giga Chips that you get. Well, I am about to show you arguably the strongest patch card in the entire game. Feast your eyes upon numbers. You get one extra custom chip, one extra mega chip, and one extra giga chip for only 17 megabytes. That is so affordable for all of the power that you get. So if you combine Freeze Man for the Barrier 200 and numbers for the miniature custom effects, that is only 47 megabytes. That means you've still got 33 for all sorts of powerful effects. And let me tell you, the patch card abilities are a lot stronger than just the Navi Customizer ones. If given the choice between using patch cards or your Navi Cust, you should focus on getting those abilities through your programs first so that you can focus on really powerful exclusive abilities like your status card, like those crazy new charge shots, and of course, like chip recovery. At the end of the day, patch cards are a confusing format. There's so many things to consider. Patch cards are wild. The HPs are massive. The strategies are cheesy. And the beast chips are pretty OP. There are exactly 118 different effects to choose from, many of which are quite powerful and strange when combined in different ways. In this video, we'll be breaking down 10 unique builds that you can use to dip your toes into the patch card format. If you're wondering why we're talking about patch cards, we've got a hub.patch tournament coming up. There are absolutely no bans as long as it's legitimate. There is everything being legal and it is available for Tango and Switch. Definitely click on the links below to learn more info. Before we get into the 10 different builds, let's talk about what patch cards are in general. These are going to give Mega Man all sorts of different effects. It's kind of like the Navi Customizer, except it's way more diverse. For example, one of the best patch card abilities you can get is called Chip Recovery. It means every single time you use a battle chip, you're going to heal for a set amount, usually 30 or 40. That might not sound like a lot, but multiply that by the 30 chips in your folder, and that's a lot of free healing just for using chips and playing the game. Heaven forbid you're at 1 HP with Undershirt, it can be really hard to kill somebody. Another really important thing you can get through patch cards is the ability to change Mega Man's charge attack. Now, he can only use these different charge attacks when he's not in a cross, which means that actually crosses are a bit weaker and less important in the patch card meta. But in any case, you can do all sorts of crazy things. For example, one of my favorite charge attacks is having Grab Banish as a chip. So for example, if your opponent is trying to go for all sorts of area grab spams, your Grab Banish as a buster is going to be able to regain those panels, and you yourself can take advantage of that through color point, double point, and all sorts of other attacks because you know you can always regain those panels back. Now, another strong thing you can do is related to your buster in general. Now, your speed and charge stats are the same as the Navi Customizer. They cap out at level 5, but your attack stat can actually go beyond the 5 given to you through the Navi Customizer. That means that your regular P-Shot can turn into 6, 7, 8, 9, or even 10 damage, kind of like using the Buster up. Now, your Charge Shots and your Beast Buster cap out at 5, but because your regular P-Shots are pretty powerful, just spamming that can be really strong. Heaven forbid you've got your Buster Blank glitch, as we've talked about in this video right here. You can occasionally fish for 80, 90, or 100 damage depending on your Buster stat, and if you combine that with a patch card that can give your Charge Shot different effects like freezing, that means that just spamming your P-Shot is a very powerful and strong way to deal damage. Look at this clip right here. 
Now, if you think that having status effects on your buster is extremely degenerate, you'd be right, but thankfully, patch cards can also give us status guard. Normally, you can only get this ability by using Tomahawk Cross, so Gregor never even had access to it, but now anyone can shut down all sorts of annoying nonsense like paralysis from Colonel Force, or maybe bubbles, or freezing, or whatever. In fact, Planet Man is one of the best mod cards in general because not only does he give you status guard, but he also increases your HP and he turns your regular P shot into a 60 damage crackout. Now, patch cards all have positive and negative effects, but the negative effects can be counteracted by a patch card that's loaded underneath it. That's right, the order in which you download them does matter. Take, for example, this Miney card. It's very strong because it does indeed give you attack 3 to go beyond your Navi Customizer's 5. However, it also disables Air Shoes, which means if you had Air Shoes in your Navi Cust, it wouldn't work. If you put Satella underneath it, it does enable Air Shoes, which will counteract and end up giving you exactly the program that you want. This is really, really helpful stuff. In fact, because regular Mega Man is so prevalent because you are able to use a different kind of charge shot, a really common thing will be having Mega Man with different bodies, right? It's almost like style changes in Battle Network 2 and 3. You might have a heat element or a water element or whatever, depending on the order of the cards. The last one is going to be the body that you want. Now, because Totem is such a popular patch card, Fire Body is pretty prevalent, so it's pretty good to be able to not have a Fire Body if given the choice. But for the most part, whichever element you want to choose is ultimately up to you. It's really just a downside because you don't reduce damage. You're only going to take double damage from other attacks. So, the first of the 10 builds we're going to talk about is Dark Mega Man. The reason we're starting with him is because he costs all 80 megabytes that you have to spend for patch cards. So, if you want to use Dark Mega Man, he is the only option you've got. He is basically no frills whatsoever. He gives you attack plus 3 to go beyond your Navi Customizer's limit of 5, and he turns your regular P shots into a 50% chance of putting out poison panels. Now, the poison panels aren't really that much damage, all things considered. They can definitely add up over the course of the fight, but the the real reason they're really helpful is because they can get rid of holy panels really easily or maybe crack panels that the opponent is trying to set up. So um, as far as disruption goes, poison panels are super solid. The main reason you want to be using Dark Mega Man by far, though, is his Dark Life Sword Swing. Unlike Bug Rise Sword, the Gregor Giga Chip, this actually does deal 400 damage. It doesn't cost you any bug frags either, and it's super hard to dodge. If you've got one area grab on the opponent, they're basically out of luck, and even without it, it can be really difficult for the opponent in any spot. At the end of the day, Dark Mega Man is a really good option, especially for newer players who just want a lot of power without having to think about way too many combinations of patch cards. If you want to remind yourself how crazy patch cards are, how about using Number Open as a build? Yes, that's right. It's not just a meme because you can get other abilities like Super Armor and Air Shoes that you normally really need just by using other patch cards. The best for this is going to be Dive Man. He gives you a good chunk of extra HP as well as an extra Mega Chip, but the real kicker, in my opinion, is his Charge Shot being Wide Shot. This is extremely accurate if you're right in the center. It's going to be very hard for the opponent to dodge unless they are behind an obstacle. Normally, Dive Man's downside of minus two custom chips is pretty backbreaking, but Number Open will completely replace it. It's not even just custom plus five. It's just its own thing entirely. And remember, if you want to get other patch cards on it, I would recommend using ones like Satella, which is a cheap way to get air shoes, and Needler, which is a cheap way to get super armor, as well as a few extra buster stats. Both of these cards, by the way, are extremely top tier because they give you such a great set of abilities for a very low megabyte cost. At the end of the day, Dive man and number open is a super fun strategy. Another good option for starting patch card players is Big Bad Base BX. He's a whopping 70 megabytes, which means there's not a lot of room to pair him with other patch cards. In my opinion, the best one you can use with him is Twisty and Remobit. This changes your regular P shot into a 50% chance of cracking the panels they're on, which is so disruptive for a number of reasons. And because Base BX has the triple shot, which you might remember using in PvE, you're basically never going to miss and your buster is extremely, extremely accurate. Plus, you've got your shooting star for your charge attack, which is powerful, and your air shoes do turn back on because even though air shoes would normally get disabled with the twisty, putting base BX after it means you do get it, plus your super armor. Altogether, a really strong disruptive build that does not require a lot of extra fine tuning. 
Next up is Tengu Man, who is simple but also deceptively very powerful. He gives you two very valuable Navi Customizer programs, Air Shoes and Beads. Normally, both of these take up quite a bit of space, and having Air Shoes on your patch card is amazing for combining with other patch cards like Miney that have really strong effects but a downside of taking off the Air Shoes, right? So as long as Tengu Man is below it, you'll still get your Air Shoes, which is very, very important. Now, you're probably thinking, well, Wind Rack as your charge attack, isn't that just Tengu Cross? Well, yeah, Tengu Cross is really, really really good having all those wind racks, right? You can blow away life auras at any moment, which is super valuable in Gregor, who is not normally able to access an effect like that. And imagine being able to row lock them with all of your area grabs and just spamming it repeatedly. And think about it, because the wind rack effect is pushing the opponent, it's really hard for them to stay in their front rows and actually deny you the ability to use your area grabs. So I would say Tango Man is great with a five area grab build, if you can even believe it, really trying to maintain as much zone control as possible. And then because Tango Man himself is so cheap in terms of the megabyte count, you can still pair him with all sorts of other effects. He's really simple, versatile, but also super, super effective. Time for something a lot more degenerate. How about Cold Man, who for the low price of 34 megabytes will make it so that your charge shot has a 50% chance to freeze the opponent. Now, it's worth noting that only Mega Man's charge shot is going to be able to freeze the opponent. Going into a cross is not going to do it with their charge attack. However, if you have a Buster Bug, there is a chance that your fully powered attack will deal max damage and it will also have a chance of freezing because it's effectively the same thing as a baseline Mega Man charge shot. So it's definitely worth noting, you can still freeze the opponent into a different cross. And of course, freezing is super powerful. We all know that they're stuck in place, which means you can keep firing your buster at them or you can set up a powerful attack that the opponent is not going to be able to dodge. And heaven forbid you have any sort of obstacle breaking attacks, they will deal double damage to a frozen opponent. Similar to freezing is being able to bubble your opponent. The Starfish patch card is super, super strong. At only 15 megabytes compared to the 34 that Cold Man gives you, your charge shot has a 50% chance to bubble. Now, it is a little bit different, right? Obviously, when you're in the bubble, they're going to take double damage from electric attacks, which is strong, or they're prone to maybe a full Gundel Soul EX or Gundel Soul 3. However, you can't spam your buster the same way you can with Cold Man. If you are actually frozen, you can reapply frozen the more you spam it. So a really lucky turn with Cold Man can be absolutely devastating. So once again, not the case with Starfish, but at a fraction of the cost, you get a very similar effect that is very easy to build around and is quite potent as well. Status conditions are super annoying, so let's talk about Status Guard once again. One of the best patch cards that can give you Status Guard is Planet Man. He gives you 300 extra HP as well, and he also turns your P shot into a 60 damage crack panel shot. That means you can leap holes all over the opponent's side of the field while also dealing a decent amount of damage without any charge whatsoever. Now, that does mean you can't fish for charge attacks with your Buster Blank, so why don't we just have an entirely new charge attack in general? One of my favorite ways to pair Planet Man is by using Bug Death Thunder. Just imagine being able to limit your opponent's mobility with all of those cracks and holes on the opponent's side of the field while they struggle to dodge a 200 damage homing paralyzing attack. Wow. And while you're waiting to draw your Bug Death Thunder, you can use Slime's Charge Attack as a panel grab. If slow gauge is up, you would be surprised how much area you can absolutely steal off your opponent for very little investment. It is extremely powerful. In fact, I would say that area grab would actually be weaker than panel grab in this case because it's so hard to deny the opponent from going all the way into the opponent's space. But even without that, Bug Death Thunder is so strong when the holes and mobility is limited and the fact that Planet Man gives you status guard is just a cherry on top. Now, abusing status conditions is pretty obvious and kind of boring, but how about using your buster with a different kind of effect, one that we see in a lot of battles but don't really take a minute to think about? This is pushing and pulling using your buster. You might not realize this, but when you get hit by a wind rack or a lance that pushes or pulls you, you're basically unable to do anything for a brief few seconds. That means if you can spam your buster to be constantly pushing and pulling, you are going to be interrupting your opponent from doing things and hitting them for a ton of damage, especially if if you're at Buster 10. So the two patch cards here are Bomb Boy, which turns your regular P shot into a 1 out of 8% chance to push them back. It also fixes a few bugs, which is kind of nice. And you got your Mag Tech, which has your charge shot a 50% chance of actually pulling them in. And if you'll notice, as long as we
we put the Bomb Boy in front, even though it has the effect Charge Shot Edition disabled, the Mag Tech on the bottom will override that with its Charge Shot Edition with the Magnet. It is a lot of fun, it's super strong, and it's also very disruptive, and the best part is, a status guard like Planet Man cannot stop this nonsense. Our last build for today is Search Man, who gives you a really fun ability, Chip Shuffle. Normally, Chip Shuffle takes way too much space on the Navi Customizer, but hey, a patch card can give it to you without any issues whatsoever. Sign me up. And you also get a little bit of extra HP at 5%, and your Charge Shot becomes Circle Gun. It does take a long time to charge up, but because it's a Cursor Attack and a Time Freeze one at that, you are going to be able to pierce through anti-damage super casually. The only downside of Search Man is a lock on air shoes, and as we've already talked about plenty of times, it's super easy to rectify that by throwing a patch card like Satella right behind it. At the end of the day, Search Man is super cool. I think Gregor can really appreciate that because Falzer always has had access to dust shooting for more chip action. Gregor doesn't really get to chip shuffle all that often, so if you're looking to assemble maybe a really powerful Colonel Force combo, this is definitely a fun way to start. So there you have it, 10 different builds for patch cards, and that's just scratching the surface. That's not even necessarily the most powerful of all the options you can use. If you think 118 different patch card effects is overwhelming, don't worry. I've cut them down in half to the 60 patch cards that I think are most viable. I've linked that in the comments, and while you're there, let us know what you think. As always, a big shout out to the N1 Grand Prix. Thank you so much for your guides and resources, especially in making this video, and a particular shout out to Honor Knight. Thank you so much for your additional help and wisdom as well. As always, we'll catch you later, Scouts.